my lovely, lovely imps. It is time at long last. That's right. We are doing another Drama Mama. And this time, it is a highly anticipated topic. James Somerton. Now, if you're new to my channel, you might not know what a Drama Mama is. But a Drama Mama is when we talk about some particularly dramatic event uh, that I think is of real importance, okay? Drama Mama is about taking something that people have turned into a drama or that has become the subject of drama and about finding out the facts, talking about them in a productive manner, laying out a timeline, getting to the bottom of it, and after we've done all of that, giving our thoughts about it. The purpose of Drama Mama is to, uh, interestingly, take the drama out of a drama and figure out what of substance is present, okay? And we have a lot of fun doing it anyway, okay? Uh, and this Drama Mama, we are, like I said, going to be talking about James Somerton. And you might be wondering, well, well, it's been a while since the James Somerton stuff started, Demon Mama. Why didn't you do a Drama Mama before? And there's a very simple answer. I didn't need to. There was no need whatsoever for me to do a Drama Mama on James Somerton before. H Bomber Guy took care of it with his video about plagiarism. In fact, if I had done a Drama Mama about this before, it would have simply been talking about H Bomber Guy's video on plagiarism, which was centered on James Somerton. Now, since then, a number of other things have uh, uh, occurred. Um, and the fallout from that video has risen to the level that I think that it is worthy of us to sit down and do a Drama Mama together. So, this following Drama Mama is going to make some basic assumptions, okay? I am going to assume that you are, that you have watched or at least are familiar with the contents of the H Bomber Guy video. I am going to give a little bit of a summary here real quick, um, but I'm not, but I, but I want you to actually go engage with the H Bomber Guy plagiarism video. Um, it is a fantastic video. It is a master class in how to actually do a responsible internet call out. Um, and it, uh, sticks to the facts in a, uh, genuinely respectable manner. Um, and on top of that, I'm going to recommend here early on that you go watch Todd in the Shadows video about James Somerton as well. Um, uh, Todd in the Shadows, uh, was actually in, uh, communication with H Bomber Guy because they were both planning a video on James Somerton with different focuses. Todd in the Shadows video, uh, fixates on factual claims that are totally unverified or very poorly supported in James Somerton's work. Whereas H Bomber Guy's video is about uh, rampant plagiarism. So please go watch those videos. Please consider watching those videos um, uh, either before or after you watch this video. Both of them are going to be very informative to you. It's Todd in the Shadows, James Somerton video, and H Bomber Guy's plagiarism video. Now I'm going to summarize the claims that were made in the H Bomber Guy video um, very briefly here, just so that we're all on the same page. H Bomber Guy's plagiarism video uh, is a four hour video. It's a very long video. And the bulk of that video is devoted to talking about a YouTuber by the name of James Somerton. James Somerton uh, is a queer YouTuber who uh, focuses largely on talking about queer issues. Um, and in H Bomber Guy's video, he demonstrates with overwhelming evidence that a large number of James Somerton's most, uh, most successful videos are um, not just uh, like borrowed in part, not just poorly cited, but are in fact often word-for-word word plagiarized from the works of other writers 
on the topics of the videos. Um, it is it is verifiable to an incredible degree, and it is egregious in the extent uh, to which James Somerton uh, uh, plagiarized other people's work. In some cases, uh, it was very difficult to tell just how far James Somerton would go to find people to take from and interesting ideas to lift from other people. Uh, it was difficult to discover the roots of those things because he had stolen them from people who did not even get a fraction of the views that his videos would end up getting. And on top of all of this, James Somerton wasn't just doing this for fun or anything like that. He wasn't just doing it for, you know, to be popular on the internet. He was doing it for a lot of money. Now, again, I encourage you to go watch H Bomber Guy's video to see the full evidence, but it is undeniable at this point. The extent to which James Somerton plagiarized from other people's work was flooring. It was genuinely shocking. Um, entire sections of books just lifted almost word for word, sometimes with extremely minor changes, sometimes with no changes at all. Um, and this was present in dozens, if not more. That was just how many videos were actually uh, reasonably investigated. I believe that the final count of videos that, that H Bomber Guy was able to confirm extensive plagiarism was present in was close to 21. And of course, H Bomber Guy admitted that was just the amount of videos that he had time to do because to continue doing it would have been an exercise uh, in uh, personal insanity. It's actually shocking. And, uh, on, on, and of course, a lot of people feel betrayed. Um, and that is something we're going to be talking about today. Um, so I, and this is where my personal experience comes in. I have, I don't think I've ever seen a James Somerton video. I think I may have seen one or maybe a years ago, a, a, a two, I don't even remember. I don't even remember the titles of them. I don't know if I've ever seen a full James Somerton video. I, I was familiar with him. I knew that he was a person who made videos on the internet. I knew that he was a video essayist, but um, I had never heard, I had never like seen, sat down and watched any of his videos. However, um, after H Bomber Guy's video came out, I realized that an incredible amount of people in my community did enjoy and learn from uh, James Somerton's content. And, uh, and I've seen some people, you know, saying they feel bad and whatever, and, and I understand that, but I want to say, uh, you shouldn't feel bad for being misled in this particular style. Uh, the way that James Somerton misled people was by stealing other people's work that was good. So what you were basically doing was latching on to something that was otherwise good while James Somerton was simply presenting it as his own. And you shouldn't really feel bad about that. Most people don't have the time or uh, energy to, like, every single video they watch, type it out into a, into a, uh, you know, a transcript and then check it through a plagiarism check checker. And in fact, that's part of the reason why plagiarism is so common on the internet, because it's unreasonable, uh, for the average person or even professionals to spend a whole bunch of time plagiarism, plagiarism checking everything they see on the internet. That's not reasonable. Um, and I just wanted to say that and get that out of the way because I've seen so many people talking about it. Um, as, as uh, you know, it's fairly uh, obvious by the branding of my channel. Uh, I uh, have a very queer community. I myself am uh, a trans woman uh, and, uh, uh, and a non-binary trans woman. I am very open about this. I talk about these things all the time. Uh, I, I am very, you know, queer issues are, uh, are a heart are a part of the heart and soul of my channel and my community is made up of a lot of really wonderful queer people and as this sort of 
incident unfolded, I had more and more people asking me to talk about it and to go into it. And like I said, I didn't really feel like I had much to say, but I feel like I do now. Um, and the reason why I do, I feel like it's time to talk about this now is because James Somerton released an apology video to the public. Um, and this apology video, uh, it ties in with a whole lot of other things that I think are important and that I think people might be missing out on. Because of course, there's no H-bomber video on the apology video. And in fact, almost, uh, almost, uh, uh, you know, almost hilariously, he deleted the apology video already. Um, the video was out for less than 24 hours before it was deleted. So what is going on here now has become exactly the type of situation that Drama Mama is all about engaging with. We have now seen a, a context a blurring cloud formulate around this drama. And I wanted to sit down, do a summary of it, give it all to you so it all makes sense to people who might not be familiar with it, who might not have been following it the entire time, but who, uh, who could still benefit from learning about it. And that's why we're here. So, we got to fact check his apology video. <laughs> Listen, uh, I'm in a unique position, okay? Which is that I have a wonderful team of people who work with me. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, uh, I, I like to think that, and in fact, I shouldn't even say I like to think. I know one of the reasons why my channel uh, stands out among other channels is because I have a really passionate team of people that I work with. And one of those team members is my incredible editor, Danny Fallen. And Danny has a real knack for archival. So I've seen a bunch of other channels talking about this particular situation, and most of them didn't actually watch the apology. Uh, and the reason being was that they didn't have a copy of the apology. But thanks to Danny Fallen, we have a copy of the apology, and we are going to be able to watch it together tonight on stream. So you joke about fact checking the apology, but yes, we are kind of gonna be fact checking the apology just a teensy bit, okay? Um, yeah, so big shout out to Danny Fallen, my amazingly talented editor for snatching the video literally almost immediately. Danny had that video within hours of it being up. So we are, <laughs> We are very, very lucky that we're going to get to see it with our own eyes and share our own thoughts about that. However, we are also going to be, um, we are also going to be engaging with a couple of other related things, uh, to the apology video, uh, that have appeared, <laughs> uh, over the last couple of days that a lot of people might have missed out on, uh, that I think are important, that I do think are important. So... Uh, I guess let's just get, get, get right into it, okay? The James Somerton Apology, uh, released on Wednesday, the 20th, and was deleted within a few hours of it. I, I believe that it was up for somewhere in the ballpark of about 12 hours. I'm not 100% sure exactly how long it was up. It's kind of difficult to get that data from YouTube, um, but it was up for, a, a, less than a day. Uh, before it was deleted. In fact, it was, it was, I found out about it being uploaded during a stream, and by the time I had ended the stream, it had been deleted. That's how short this apology was up for. And, um, I'm interested and excited to watch it with you. So, uh, if you are, are interested and ready for this ride, if you find this all fascinating, and if you believe in what I do here at Drama Mama, taking drama to the next level and actually stepping beyond the sort of petty aspect to actually give you the facts, to actually talk about important aspects, to talk about important and dangerous things, 
Please make sure that you press subscribe down below. Please make sure that you press like on the video. And without any further ado, let's dive right in, okay? Here we go. Oh. Hey, everyone. Whoa. Oops. It already started playing. All right, let's watch this. Hold on. Let me full screen it here for us. Where's my full screen button? Bam. All right. Let's watch this. Oh, I got to put the text up on the screen. Wouldn't want anybody, wouldn't want to steal credit from James Summerton. I'm sorry for uh, taking so long to make this video or to say anything. Um, I'm in the hospital. I've been in the hospital um, for a little over a week. Um, I tried, fuck. I tried to do something really stupid. Um, I'm really only here now because before I, I did it, I, I called my dad to talk to him one more time and he figured out something was wrong and called paramedics or 911 or... Anyway, they got here and uh, I woke up in the hospital and yeah. Um, Anyway, I'm not trying to make this a sob story. I'm just, I'm just trying. If that's true, why did you start the video, which was supposed to be an apology, with this? Now. I'm not going to say that it's impossible um, that he was in the hospital or that he attempted to do something very stupid or any of those things. I do believe that that's a real possibility. I think it's a possible thing that could have happened. We'll never know. There's no way to verify that type of thing. Um, and I just, I just, I don't know if you could, I don't know if we'll ever be able to know that sort of thing as true without talking to a family member or something along those lines. And honestly, I don't know that it really matters whether it is or isn't true. Um, uh, I know that a lot of people um, saw this portion and immediately had a sort of uh, visceral, uh, 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 you know, distrust response. And I can't say that I blame them. I don't know that it really matters whether it's true or not. Um, and the reason why I say that is because I don't think it changes the, the substance of what's going on here. I don't think that it affects what he did. Um, I don't think that whether he actually did or didn't have a, um, a mental health crisis after uh, the video went down, I, I, I just don't know that any of it really affects anything. Um, and that's not me trying to be cold. It's just a simple fact of the matter. Um, what James Summerton did was steal hard work from a lot of people. He was caught in that act. And not only that, but he did it over a long period of time, uh, repeatedly. And then when confronted about it, lied about it on multiple occasions. So, whether or not he ended up having a mental health crisis after being sort of publicly exposed for this is neither here nor there. One thing I will say that I think is very telling about the situation is that the predominant response has been to not believe him. And um, 
I don't think that in this particular case, that's because the internet is incredibly callous, although that is true. The internet is incredibly callous and also psychotic about people. Uh, but the people who are most invested in this particular situation are his own fans. And I personally have seen uh, people I know who were former fans of him express um, distrust and not in any sort of cruel way, just a sort of, I don't know if I can believe this. And that is the downstream effect of mass dishonesty. When you are serially dishonest to people's faces, they won't believe even, uh, even the worst thing that you could say, even the truest thing that you could try and say, you will not be believed if you have a cultivated a reputation of dishonesty to this degree, especially when there is hard evidence of that dishonesty. And I think that that's one of the immediate takeaways of this situation is that um, trust has been utterly destroyed uh, in the case of James Somerton. There is no possible way that any person um, who isn't incredibly, uh, you know, emotionally invested uh, uh, in James Somerton's uh, personality or platform, anybody, uh, and even those who are, it, it's almost impossible for anyone who's, who's aware of this information to walk away and go, yeah, I think I can trust this guy. Yeah, it, it, people are saying, of course, it's like a crying wolf situation. And, and I think there are, like, I think that applies to a certain degree, but it's not even a matter of, of, of crying wolf because he wasn't lying about, um, he wasn't lying about a danger. He wasn't even anything like that. He just lied purely for his own benefit. Um, it's not even, it's, it's actually worse than a cry wolf situation, or I don't know, at least it's different, slightly different because what he was lying about was his own who he is he lied about everything that his personality is online his entire online persona has been exposed to have been built on falsehoods so anybody who who is seeing this how could anybody trust anything that comes out of his mouth if the entire body of his online work the thing that he is known for online is built on fundamental falsehoods how could you believe his testimony on anything Not an Android said, okay, he did actually claim cry wolf. When he when people called out his plagiarism in the past, he claimed that he was being harassed and get, got death threats. Okay, that is true. That was a piece of, uh, that was something that was brought up in, uh, in, 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 in the videos was that he did do that in the past. Um, which is interesting too, because um, that type of, uh, that's one of those interesting little things because I don't doubt that James Somerton has received death threats. I don't doubt that he's received harassment, but um, when people bring up something valid and you defer to an to a, you know a, a a bad thing that happened to you as a YouTuber as an excuse, uh, uh, that's a that's a manipulative tactic, you know, especially if it's not like contextual. And if you can't prove it, if you have, if, if you're engaged in a, in a conflict with an individual person who's accusing you of something and you can prove that those people are doing something, you have the evidence of that. That's fantastic. Um, but to sort of just defer to bad things happening to you on the internet as a defense to something that you're being accused of is, is fairly manipulative. Do you have evidence of that, Delance? Do you have evidence of that? We can take a look at it, but I haven't seen that. Robotic Reborn says, I cannot trust him ever again. He and his community misled me for years when I was trying to come, terms with my, come to terms with my own queerness. Looking back, he's responsible for a lot of my internalized struggles. It's such a weight off my back for his career to end irreversibly in this way. I imagine a, uh, 
I imagine a ton of people feel that way. Um, and I can't even imagine what the people who were stolen from feel like through all of this. Some of them might not even know at this very moment that they were stolen from and that somebody made a lot of money off of their work. Let's continue. I'm trying to explain um, why I've been so quiet. Um, I had a friend from back home um, checking my emails and stuff. Um, and, uh, I, I should say I spent a lot of time explaining the trust aspect of of this, but I should also point out from a production aspect that um, James Somerton chose to start the video this way. This is an edited video. This is not a live stream or a live recording. What you are watching with me right now, I should be clear, this, me, this is a live stream. My camera is on, and if I say something wrong, I have to go, God damn it, sorry, I misspoke, or whatever. This is a live stream. But what he is doing, obviously, is an edited video. He did not post this as a live stream. This was an edited video that he recorded. He chose which takes to include. He chose which order um, to put this video in. And that says something. There is an aspect of intention that can be gleaned from how a piece of media is constructed. Starting your video with sort of a extremely emotional and tearful uh, 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 claim that you were in the hospital uh, because you did something stupid um, without making any explicit claims as to what that is. Um, just leaving it up to implication is a very specific choice. Doe says, video essayists should be forced to give live stream apologies. Yeah. Okay. Oh, true. Damn it, Danny. You're right. It will be an edited video when people watch it in the future. See? Ah, oh, God damn it. It's going to be when people watch it in the future, then it'll be an edited video. Oh, God. Oh. And also true, absolutely true to what Doe says. Doe says video essays should be forced to give live stream apologies. I do think that if somebody is going to give an apology, they should do it live. Because I think it's a whole lot, it's, the, the pressure is a lot higher, okay? There's a lot, there's been a lot of discourse over the years uh, in the live streamer versus, uh, uh, versus video, or like versus video essays discourse. You know, like there's this whole conversation about the differences. But let me tell you something. There is a, I've done both types of things over the years in multiple ways, okay? I used to work filming live events back when I was in film school. I have worked on edited, uh, I, 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 I've worked on edited films. I have made pre-recorded segments very, very rarely on this channel, but I've made pre-recorded segments and I've done a, a fuckload of live streaming. And let me tell you, there is a special type of pressure that comes from me looking directly in the camera and knowing that everybody's watching this live and that, uh, you gotta be a little careful, okay? It's, it's just a little, there's a different level of pressure, okay? It's a completely different world. And obviously, some of you are going to be watching this on YouTube, at which point it will be edited, but it's an, edit it's an editing of a live show, and, you know, you'll be able to tell when there's an edit, so, anyway. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Yeah. Um... But anyway, um, 
I want to say that I'm really, really sorry. Really. Really sorry. Um. For? For? For what? For the stuff in the videos. Not crediting people and... Whoa! For a lot of videos, you know, like... What? For the stuff in the videos, not crediting people. Dude, you didn't not credit people. You stole entire sections of books to use as your script. That is not not crediting people. We are two minutes and 40 seconds into this video. And already, the that is a, that is a downplay that is a lie. It is a downplay that is so in, so, that doesn't even come close to resembling what the actual problem is. The, not crediting people is, is not even the beginning of, of James Summerton's problems in these videos. I did the opening titles things, um, and I tried to put, like, this is based on X's, this person's research or this person's book, but I, I know, I, I know now that that wasn't, that wasn't enough. That wasn't you knew it at the time, dude. There's no, there's, I, I, you knew, he, there's no way, I do not believe for a second that he didn't know at the time that and and the way that you can prove that is in the H bomber video. In the H bomber video, he shows that it was only after he already got pushback from specific people that he added those titles. So initially, he didn't even do that. And it was only once people brought it to his attention that he that he slew, threw that based on there like a very low level CYA. That's actually, oh my god. It's something is when something is based on something is like when you make a unique film that was inspired by a real world event. Okay, so you're doing a dramatic retelling of something that happened in the real world. That's a based on situation. A based on situation is when you're working with a famous writer to adapt a film version of their book. That's based on, okay? Based on is not when you literally tear pages out of a book and paste it into your script. Script. The fact that even here, that even in this apology, he refuses to even acknowledge what he verifiably did, and there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Again, just... No question that that's what he did. You can literally put the text side by side and go this sentence, this sentence, this sentence, this sentence, one word changed. This sentence, this sentence, this sentence, two words changed. Jesus. Okay. And, and then there were a lot of times that, uh, There were a lot of times that stuff just got put in and there was no attempt. Stuff just got put in? By who? Who just put it in? Who just put it in? Accrediting anybody. Wait. There was stuff that just got put in without crediting anybody. The problem, again, he did it again. He just restated it. He started by saying we didn't credit people, and then he said, but there were times when we didn't credit people. The it's actually shocking just how pathetic this apology has been so far. That, that is what we call, for those who are unaware, some of you will be familiar with this, many of you, uh, some of you won't. That's what we call using the passive voice to mislead. Uh, this, is like what hap this is like what happens when uh, a news 
uh, a news article that is trying to downplay negative actions done by, say, the police, says uh, uh, a person was killed in a police incident this morning. And they, and they go, well, who was killed and who killed them? That, that is the type of passive voice that's being used here. Some things were put into the text. By who? Who put them into the text, James? And I'm really, really sorry. Um, and I'm not, I'm not sorry that I got caught. I'm oh, dude, sorry why would you even say that? Doing it. I, why would you say that? It's three minutes, four minutes in. Why would you say that? Like, I'm not trying to help him tell a, wor a better apology when he's lying it's, and when it's so obvious that he's not even engaging with what he's been accused of. But why would you just be like, oh, it's just straight up. <laughs> guys, guys, I, I'm, I, I'm not trying. I am not the one who left the dead body in the garbage room, okay? I'm not. I just want you to understand. I'm, I'm not the one who did that. Didn't. I honestly. Honestly. Didn't realize that I was hurting people. And now that I know that I was hurting people, um, just really sorry. To who? Uh, who did you hurt and how did you hurt them? Who did you hurt and how did you hurt them? If this was a real apology, if this was an apology that was actually meant anything, he would apologize to the people that he hurt for what he did, okay? An apology is not when you sort of vaguely go, I feel so bad right now. My feelings, they're very bad, and my bad is very feelings, okay? That's not what an apology is. An apology is when you say, hey... I did something to you, and I didn't mean to do it, or maybe you did. I didn't mean to do it, but I realized that I did something to you, and I am sorry for that. How can I make the, how can I make it up to you? Can you forgive me for that thing that I did? It was wrong that I did it. It's owning up what you did. It's it's addressing who you actually did it to, and it's be and showing dem like a, an acknowledgement that you were wrong and an, and a desire to fix it. If you can, that is an apology. Yes, exactly. Not an Android says, yes, he keeps making it about himself instead of the people he actually harmed. Yes, he keeps talking about his feelings. He opens the video about all the hard things that he went through, where he went to the hospital for doing something stupid. It's what he went through. Can't you see how hard this has been on him? Really gross behavior. Genuinely disgusting behavior, in my opinion. I lost my best friend because of this. Nick and I have been best friends since... 2000... 2011 or 12. <laughs> We'd been friends online, and then he lived in Ottawa, and I, I moved to Ottawa so that we could be, like, friends in person. And um, Okay. But again, this is him not apologizing, not apologizing to anyone, but instead 
crying and bemoaning something that happened to him. Literally still only talking about himself. Bezadu with the five tier one subs. Thank you very, very much for supporting this viewer supported show. This show is 100% viewer supported. We don't do sponsorships or anything like that. So thank you for supporting me. Bizadu says, It wasn't me, the butler with the knife who killed the maid in the kitchen, Pepe. This guy would be ass at poker. Just sitting there like, I don't have a flush. I don't have a flush. True. And then we moved back to... I moved back to Nova Scotia and Nick came with me and then... We... Dude, why are you crying about that? That's worse for Nick. That's actually unironically worse for Nick. Nick was somebody who, for all that we could tell, was trusting you and moved across the country with you. An employee who moved across the country with you and a friend. You owe an apology to Nick. That eventually moved to the Toronto area and... We lived together for, um, seven years, eight years. We lived together for a really long time. And, uh, he, he hasn't sp spoken to me since this happened. Um, sorry. I said I wasn't going to make this a sob story. Again, let me remind you, this is an edited video. An edited video where James could have done as many takes as he needed. Okay? He could have recorded this 20 more times if he didn't want it to be a sob story. But instead, he's been... He's been interestingly very dryly crying... I don't think I've actually seen any actual tears on his face, but um, he's been crying for uh, quite a while um, and acting as though this is like a spontaneous thing. But it really, it really, it really does have like a sickening effect emotionally, doesn't it? When you realize that this is practiced, when you take yourself out of it. See, video has this deceptive effect, okay? And, um... And, and this is something that's been talked about all over the place in many different contexts. The fact that, um, that video, especially on the internet, especially the type of video where somebody is looking directly into the camera and talking to you, it gives an illusion of it happening in real time. A part of your brain, it's very easy for a part of your brain to just sort of feel. Even if you can acknowledge that it's like not real or whatever, or it's not actually happening in real time, um, that, uh, that even when it is pre-recorded, a part of your brain goes, oh, this is real. This is super, super real. And, and it's happening in front of me. If somebody was crying in front of me, I would have a hard time with that. But, um, again, this isn't a live stream. This is an edited video. He chose this take. He chose to do the one in which he's sniffling and which he's breaking down at certain moments that was the take that he chose to put out there wild all right let's continue i should have caught some kleenex um But again, I'm really, really, really sorry for the things that I did in the videos. Again, I, I, I really hate to be, I really hate to be this person. No, I don't. I'm, I'm okay. I, I feel okay. Actually, I feel okay being a little bit of a bitch. I don't see any wetness on his face whatsoever. Like nothing. I don't see anything wet whatsoever. I see red spots from where he's been rubbing over and over and over again. But I don't see any tears whatsoever. Like none. Like his glasses are very shiny. It's not that there's a lighting problem and you can't just see it. There's just no, there's just no wetness. So he didn't even choose, you know, maybe that's just incompetence on his part.
Yeah, he's not even got any fog on his glasses. Copying people's work and not crediting them properly or at all. Whoa! Copying people's work and not crediting them. No, dude! It's copying people's work, period. You don't get to copy people's work and credit them. That's still not okay. Copying people's work is the problem. This this obsession with the crediting, it, it's this is manipulation. I'm just going to be completely blunt and honest. This is gross manipulation, okay? This is constantly centering on the not crediting makes it go, well, all he really needs to do is go through his videos and add a credit. That's all he did. He just didn't write a credit. Oh, you know, you know, you can imagine yourself, you know, making that mistake. Oh, he didn't put, he didn't type some text in there. Ah, shucks. And the fact that he keeps fixating on the, I didn't do the credit. It's not about the fucking credit, man. It's about the fact that you stole entire works and presented them as your own in entirety. Even if you had put down in the bottom the tiniest little credit in the world, that wouldn't have made it okay. Yeah. Why didn't he, why didn't he think about the onions? The onion is a classic. A classic way to really get you crying. Yes, he is. I agree with Tormuz. Tormuz says he's at, he's trying to move the goalpost of the discussion. He's trying to reframe the accusations. He's trying to, to the viewers, he's trying to uh, make their brain latch on to the crediting part and not the part that he stole these things outright. The, the misinformation. And it just outright lies that ended up in the videos. I can the lies that ended up in the videos. What do you fuck? You mean the lies that you put in the videos? What do you mean the lies that ended up in the videos, dude? Holy shit! Is this worse than the Miranda Sings apology? Is this worse than the? Toxic gossip train? Like, in the toxic gossip train, it wasn't an apology. It was called an apology, but it was just her making fun of people accusing her, and she basically didn't apologize. She did like a sarcastic, I'm sorry then. But, um, this is just like, like, full on spin zone. Obviously, the shit going on in toxic in toxic gossip train is like a little is is higher stakes even than this, you know. Just to keep it in scope, what what happened with the Miranda Singh situation was uh was a bunch of really terrible behavior towards literal children, the exploitation of literal children. Uh, and obviously, here we're dealing with stealing people's intellectual property, which is bad, but not quite the same thing. But the apology itself. My God. My God. I honestly say that I never intended for any of that to, any of that stuff to be in. Bezadu with the five gifted tier one subs. Thank you very, very much. Whoops, all these subs just fell out of my wallet. I can't believe this happened to me. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, uh, uh, five tier one subs were gifted to my chat. Thank goodness. And likewise, $10 were super chatted to my YouTube by Crap Navy General. Thank you very, very much, Crap Navy General, for the $10 super chat. Crap Navy General says, when a skilled manipulator fake cries, they are usually crying for real. The tears are for real, but they're harnessing the emotion of something other than what they're saying to you, i.e. getting caught. Well, I don't even, I just think this is an incompetent lie. Like, there is a lot of manipulation going on here, which is disgusting to see, but this is an, ab this is absolutely incompetent lying so far. 
the the overuse of passive voice is screams like i feel like even people who are not particularly media literate would be able to catch on to these particular ones i feel like um he's making my job too easy for me the videos in most cases i didn't write it but i should have you know it was my face on the channel it was my name on i'm sorry what be in the videos in most cases i didn't write it but i should in most cases, I didn't write it. So is he still trying to pin all of this on Nick? If so, I sure hope Nick was being paid an incredible amount to ghostwrite your entire channel. That is insane. That is fucking insane. He is throwing Nick under the bus. Yeah, thankfully, H-Bomber guy took the wind out of that uh, 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 very, very well. I don't think that anybody is going to buy that it was Nick's fault. I don't even, even, even him saying this, even though it's a disgusting attempt to throw somebody else under the bus, while he was still the one benefiting pr primarily from the channel, now it just, now it just makes it, uh, now it just opens questions as to whether he was just exploiting Nick on top of all of it. Pathetic. Should have. You know, it was my face on the channel. It was my name on the channel. I should have been. Yeah, dude, it was. Which means the buck stops with you. That means the buck stops with you. You don't get to throw Nick under the bus for years of stolen content. If you're so fucking lazy that you're just reading scripts completely written by somebody else, you never even look into it once. The buck stops with you, bro. All right, let's continue. Um... I should have been more diligent about uh, fact checking and stuff. Because there was a lot of really d stupid shit in there. <laughs> it was just so easy to check. And I just never did. I just took it for granted. Um. Oh, yeah. So he's just completely throwing Nick under the bus as if he didn't just make up the bullshit off the cuff. Um, this, this portion is, by the way, um, the reason why I shouted out both H-Bomber guy and Todd in the Shadows video is because this right here is referring to Todd in the Shadows video. Todd in the Shadows video is a much shorter video that basically addresses a bunch of bogus factual claims that were made in James Summon's vi Sum Summerton's videos by James Summerton. I also, I want to thank uh, H-Bomber Guy and his team for setting up the fund. Um, to make some money available for the authors that were wronged. Um, in the that were wronged by you? How about the authors that I wronged? I will be giving money to them. Journalists. And writers and <laughs> I want to help somehow I don't know how a lot of how about giving your money how about giving all of your money away and moving into a cardboard box my man why don't you try with that I don't I, don't, I just don't know how to help how about spending the re the next year of your life going on a my name is Earl-esque adventure where you go and apologize to all of the people you stole from. How about that? How about you spend the next year of your channel uh, and your gigantic platform and all of the money you made off of your gigantic platform uh, platforming and promoting all of those people? Jesus. I, I, I actually I actually cannot believe that I'm sitting here listening to him go, I just don't know how to help. Uh, thank you to H Bomber Guy for setting up a fund for the people who were stolen from by me.
Uh, I just don't know how to help. I, I just, what would, what could possibly help in this situation? What could I possibly do? <gasps> Thank you, bird noise. Oh, we're going to get to that, Delance. Oh, we're going to get to that. I've seen a lot of people online saying how much money I apparently make and they're way overestimating. Bullshit. Bullshit. Okay, I'm sorry. Listen, um, I'm sorry. Bullshit. Ooh, woo. Bullshit. Okay, I'm so sorry. Um, first... It is absolutely true that your everyday viewer is actually completely uh, uh, stupid about how much money the creators that they watch make. Your average viewer, idiots. They don't know anything. You guys probably think that everybody that you watch is a millionaire and you're all wrong, okay? Um, it, is, it is very difficult. Uh, as a viewer to grasp, uh, just as like an everyday viewer to grasp how much money someone is making, especially if you're watching someone who has like a, a fairly nice setup, which is often the nicest room in their entire house. Uh, sometimes, literally a room that they use for like eight other uses. However, the people who've been giving estimates for how much James Somerton is making from all of his stuff are not random viewers. They are other creators. They are other people who use Patreon, who know how to look at this stuff and know how to make a solid estimate. There are people, and we're gonna get here, so stick around, because we're gonna get to this. I knew it was going to be important that I grabbed some very specific receipts, because we're going to talk about just how qualified some of the people who have been making claims about James Somerton's uh, income really are. I got a treat for you all in just a little bit, okay? We'll get, we'll get to that in just a little bit, but just put a pin in this. Just remember the claims about how much money he's, he's saying, nobody really knows how much money I make. Sure, maybe random Twitter people are overestimating how much money you make, but the rest of us, the people who are in this business, we know how much money you're making. It's fairly easy to find out, okay? It really is. And just to nail this home, by the way, let me just show you something, okay? Uh, hold on, I wanna show you, hold on, okay? I want to I want to show you guys how how what I mean when I say that like uh when I say that that people that uh uh, uh that, that this this like everyday people who do this have no idea what they're talking about. So this is my own social blade, okay? My it says here my estimated monthly earnings from YouTube are between $48 and $766. This is absolutely dead wrong, okay? abs just utterly dead wrong okay and this one is even more dead wrong okay my estimated yearly earnings from youtube is 574 to 9000.2 just what how do they even come up with these numbers laughable all right so i just wanted to hammer it home that they're super they're super super wrong uh, like the average person who just goes on Social Blade and tries to make a uh, a guess um, is d totally wrong. But we're going to get to the people who are not totally wrong about things and who are totally right. Yeah, uh, Social Blade literally just makes shit up. It completely makes shit up. Anyway, let's continue. Beyond the fact that Nick and I split everything 50-50. Um, Bullshit! No shot. No fucking shot. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I have no... Listen, there's no way... There's no way that I can... Um, that I can prove this portion. But I don't believe it to be true. I just simply do not believe that James Somerton gave 50% of everything. All of the sponsorships. All of the Patreon. That it was... 50 50 between him and nick i don't believe it i do not believe that i think first of all that never happens like i think the like not even okay 
even in channels where there are two people who are the main faces, like Good Mythical Morning, those guys don't split everything 50-50. That's fucking impossible. You got bills to pay. You got fucking other people on your team. You got marketing costs. There's no fucking way that you split everything 50-50. There's no way that he's having his, um, that he's having his, like, uh, ghostwriter, his his claimed ghostwriter, that he's having his writer uh, uh, pay for 50% of the expenses and is also getting 50% of the income on the channel that his face is the name of. Not a chance. Now, I don't have, I, I admitted this, I don't have any proof of this, okay? But this is my bolt, my personal bullshit detector. Now, I could be wrong. We'll find out when we read Nick's response, won't we? I could be wrong. But this is my bullshit detector going off, okay? They're still way overestimating how much money came in. Um, and uh, the Toronto area is expensive, so there's not really any kind of savings. I'm, I'm moving home really soon. Um, Without Nick, there's there's nothing for me here, and um, you know, like I said, it's really expensive. <laughs> um, and so, I real quick, just to just so we're clear, okay, when when James Summerton set his Patreon to private at the beginning of December, he had. 3,447 paid members. That was when it went private, which was after the video dropped, a couple of days after the, the video dropped. So before there, so there was probably already a drop off, okay? Uh, in, uh, uh, of members by the time that he put it private, okay? That's, I think that's reasonable to assume, okay? That was paid. Do we have any info on what his lowest tier was? Let's find out. Let's find out what his lowest tier was. Here, let's look at it on the third. Let's find out. The lowest, me the lowest membership was $1, okay? However, the lowest membership does not give you the early access to the videos. The, pr the recommended one, this is the Patreon recommended level is $2.50 a month. Now it is possible that there were people who were just dropping $1 a month, but most video makers, uh, people go to the Patreon so they can get the early video access. That is like the most popular choice. Even Patreon tells you that when you make your own, and I can say this because I have a Patreon. The Patreon recommends giving early access to videos if you're a video making person. If you're a video maker on Patreon, they're like, you should consider giving early access to your patrons. That's like literally the most recommended thing. That was $2.50. Now there's fees, of course. Um, but the but Patreon by default charges the fees to the user, if I remember correctly. And uh, that means that even if we were being completely generous, his Patreon alone, if every single person there was a, was a $1 a month person, that he still had $3,500 minus the fees um, coming in just from Patreon. That's not including YouTube. That's not including... Uh, uh, that's not including YouTube ad revenue. That's not including YouTube memberships. That's not including, uh, sponsorships. That's not including, like, donations that come from YouTube videos, super chats, super thanks, etc. What's his highest rank? His highest contributor is a $100 a month contribution tier. Which allows people to request a video... And they have to be in th in that tier for three months before they're even allowed to make a request.
Wild. Oh, we'll get to the camera thing. I don't want to spend too much time on this just because we're going to talk about this a whole lot, but I just want you to point I just wanted to point out that he's fucking bullshitting here. This is total bullshit. Him downplaying how much he was making on Patreon when people have said, "Dude, you are were clearly making a lot of money, especially because you had a uh, uh, YouTube ad revenue, you had uh, uh, YouTube donations and you also had sponsorships." regular sponsorships what tier gets a video credit they all get video credits it, it seems yeah all of the all of the tiers get video credits so i would be shocked uh if the average Wait a second. Hold on a second. Wait. He had more than that. He had 4,053 members when this was last archived. So the stats, the stats tracker was incorrect. Internet Archive shows that he had 4,053 members when it was last archived. So it's even more than what we had initially done. Jesus Christ. Let's continue. Let's continue. My God. I want, to I want to thank them for setting up that fund. And I want to help somehow. Um, the only thing I can think of right now is to make the videos, most of the videos, public again. Um, and every month I can send the ad revenue from all of the past videos uh, because there, there were plenty that didn't have any any. All right, let's hear that again. Is to make the videos, most of the videos, public again. Um, and every month, I can send the ad revenue from all of Hittance. the past videos. Because uh, there, there were plenty that didn't have any any uncredited stuff in them. How many was plenty? What 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 do you mean by how many is plenty, my man? Because H Bomber Guy got you on basically your entire first page of videos were deeply plagiarized. So I want to know how many you think plenty is. And secondly, uh he's talking about giving pennies to people. Videos, um, so ad revenue drops off very, very sharply, very, very quickly. You're like uh, the ad revenue for a video, uh, it, it's, it's like, it's like shocking how much it falls off. I wish I could show you a tier for a video, uh, or I could show you a graph for like a video, but I don't know if I act, I don't know if YouTube actually graphs how hard the fall off is, but after, after a video has been out for like a month, you're getting, you're, you're just not getting much on those videos anymore. The, the, the first month and the first few months, if you're the, if you're a channel that like posts really long form videos that tend to get a lot of views in those early months, that's the golden moment. And after that, it really, really slows down. There are a handful of videos that are able to make video that are, there are a handful of types of videos that are able to make a lot of money long term. Even those will have a pretty serious drop off. But um, those types of videos are usually like short memes um, or meme compilations. Videos that people will go back to for years and like go watch. Or like videos that go viral and get watched for years. Uh, and of course, music videos. Music videos are another one that tend to have a slightly more sustained ad revenue because people will go back and listen to it. But it's not very common um, that you have like a video essayist that tons and tons and tons of people are going um, and watching all of the videos that they, you know, a video essay that, that, that people are watching a year or two years after again and again and again. It's just not how people engage with this type of stuff. Let's continue. Um, but I can make them public again and then every month I can send the AdSense to either Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, thank you, Danny. Perfect. Legendary Danny. Here we go. 
this is what the CPM chart of a video looks like based on the ads we get for most videos. So you can see, here's where it starts when it launches in March and it just drops down. Might get a spike if, a, if it becomes popular again, drops down, small spike, and then So you can see this is where it starts and this is where a video ends. And that's only over the course of, from March of 2022. This is a year and a half, basically, a little more than a year and a half. So you can see just how much it drops. And this video is one that didn't even have a very high CPM to begin with. So yeah, even on videos where you have fairly low CPM, it drops really harsh. What he's again, all of this is to say he's offering to throw pennies at the people that he threw from that he stole from. I can send it to H Bomber Guy's team that they can add to the fund or um Dude, I can start. you know who you stole from. Send it to them. You know who you stole from. Send it to them. Holy shit. Fund myself. Uh And uh, every month. Also, again, edited video. Why is he musing like this? Why wouldn't he just make the decision of what he's going to do before he made his apology video? And of course, the answer is because self-preservation came first. The reason why he's rambling around in here is to give people the idea that he's going to do something so that they stop caring and he can go back to trying to find a way to save his reputation. I can publicly say how much money was made on the AdSense and show it and uh, send that to the writers and stuff every month. I don't know what the system for that would be, but uh, I'd be more than happy to do that. You know, some of the videos like the, the killing stalking video brought in like a pretty decent amount of money every month so how much how much money did that video bring in every month my man how much that would be helpful i think um i also put it either in the description or the pinned comment um the 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 names of the authors so that anyone watching the video knows where all of the information came from, that it wasn't me going out doing journalism. I never, I never thought anyone thought that I was doing journalism. What are you fucking talking about? Journalism. Whoa. Huh? You're now trying to pin it on the audience because you're trying to say they thought you were a journalist? They didn't think you were a journalist. They thought that you were an original researcher, not a fucking journalist. They thought that you were a fucking video essayist, that you were writing original essays about your thoughts about shit you engaged in. Okay, you guys, <laughs> I have felt a lot of self-consciousness over time about when I go on a rant about my reads of say the the bdsm boss fight in metal gear solid one or the pet play scene in metal gear solid five or the the parental relationship that is uh, uh that is told on screen between big boss um and miller and i felt self-conscious that my rants come off as very you know unprofessional and you know just kind of like i'm giving my thoughts i do not feel bad anymore at all okay because those are just literally the most like i realize that i am like a towering titan of originality compared to these fuckers the fact that i can just like that the fact that i'm willing to turn on my camera and just be like hey here's what i think about that i played this scene last night on a video game that I'm playing. Here's my thoughts about the queer subtext in that scene. Hope you guys think my thoughts are interesting and that that's the content that I put out and 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 other people are just like fucking stealing entire books because they're so self-conscious about their own fucking creation. They wanna make money off of somebody else's work. Actually insane.
let's get back into it. Where were we? We were being lied to. We were being, I don't know, we were, we were, we were being lied to about something. Something about, oh, it's the credits, bro, the credits. Like journalism and stuff. Um, and I don't, I don't think anyone did. Um, but the people who actually were doing it should have been given the credit that they deserved. They did the hard work. All I did was edit a video. Dude, he's doing it again. I was joking, but he's literally just back on it again. It's not about the credit. It's about the fact you stole entire books. Um, they did the hard work and they, they deserved the credit. Sorry about that. Phone stopped. <laughs> All of the true imps are telling me to go back to the, go back to the video game talk. Go back, go back. Yes, yes. Our power is growing. Yes, the community is growing in power. Yes. Recording. Um, yes, they they deserved. They deserved credit. And they deserve to not be stolen from. They deserved to not be stolen from by you it wasn't about them deserving credit you should have written an original piece with your with your own goddamn thoughts let's continue something when it was something like the the recent um history of hollywood videos Right there in the opening credits, I, I put Vito Russo's name that, that, that it was adapted from his book. The it wasn't adapted. It was taken. You didn't adapt anything. You took it. The Lloyd Closet. Um, Boon of Tyrant says VLC. Did he remove this video? Yes. This apology has been deleted. Um, for those who have jumped in since we started this video, and as a reminder for those who are watching uh, my my video version of this later, um, we have an archived version, thanks to Danny Fallen, my editor, uh, who was able to grab it right away because James Somerton took this damn video down uh, within hours of posting it. Wild. Same thing went for the gay panic video and the gay holocaust video they were the gay holocaust video was adapted from two books and the gay panic video was adapted from a lot of not adapted stolen not adapted not adapted um journalism and i i uh um i put their names right at the beginning of the videos um But I, un I understand that that's not how citation works. Um, now, I, I understand that. I get it. Howlsor says, I wish my empathy would calm down because I know he doesn't deserve it, but I feel almost bad for him. That's why he filmed it like this. That's why he filmed a video of him boo-hooing and crying because... He knows that people out there are human and that they don't like to see people hurting and that people it, it's like it's like it, when you're it's like in the in the in the Pixar movie when the villain goes, oh, I surrender. Oh, please don't hurt me. And then they go, fine, I'll show mercy. And then the villain pulls out a gun and goes, ha, 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 you fool. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Let's do this. Um, and I want to do better. <laughs> I know a lot of people hate me. Now, um, I, why? Why would they hate you? Whoa! I wonder why they might hate you. Shit. Um, better. At some point, I'd like to make videos again.
I'd like to do videos that are fully sourced where I will put a link to the script where you can find all of the sources um, so that everyone is properly given the credit that, that they deserve, any kind of research that's done, um, credit for any b-roll that's used, whether it's like stock footage or movies or TV shows or video games or uh. anything like that. Have it all in there. I would like to become a really, really good example of giving pro that ship has sailed my man that ship has sailed also if you if you've just donated don't worry i'm gonna read all the donations in just a little bit we just did a ton of donation reads and i want to make sure the video still flows for the youtube people later um yeah so don't worry about it but also james summerton that ship has fucking sailed man upper credit to writers and journalists And I know a lot of a lot of you watching this are aren't really gonna care and you would rather I just disappear. Um Dude, holy shit. That is that might be the most boo-hoo line I've heard this entire time. There is like he obviously front loaded this with a bunch of like self-pitying shit but right there being like there's a bunch of you who don't like me and don't care and will just want me to disappear um yeah a lot of people are checked out from what you've done now because you've been lying to them for years as it turns out that's a really great way to get people to want to fucking check out of what you've made jesus but i would like to try to do better I never, ever intended to hurt anybody. We still have 15 minutes left doing. in this. Jesus. No, we still have 20 minutes left in this before apology. I went, before I went to the hospital, I, I read a lot of stuff from people who were really hurt. Not, not just authors and stuff, but... Poisonous gossip train Riding down the tracks to Misinformation, uh, uh, location, poisonous gossip train. People who watched my videos who were hurt by stuff in them. Um, people think that I, I hate <laughs> face people. Not an android says hazardous hearsay locomotive. Okay, that's a little much, but honestly, that's kind of in character. That would kind of be in character for his scripts because the times that he did reword things, he did make it way clunkier almost every time. <laughs> the biohazard slander van. <laughs> the radioactive rumor rail. <laughs> no. Bull and women and bisexual people and lesbians and that's not true <laughs> it's really it's just it's not it's not true um i'm sorry that stuff made it into videos that just <laughs> yeah uncle gumball shouldn't have been there Mission. I'd also look like Krusty the Clown by the end of it. By the end of a 48-hour react stream, I would be like, Oh boy, I gotta get out of here. Information and lies. I promise you I did not write that stuff. I should have been a lot more exacting when Nick and I would be editing scripts. Dude, no, you should not have been more cruel to your editor. 
that is or your 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 claimed writer now reminder there's a bunch of people who've come in since we started this after we finish this video we are going to be reading over nick's response to this nick being the person who james summerton is indirectly or i i shouldn't even say indirectly he hasn't said nick's name in these sections but he well i guess he just did so yeah he is just directly blaming nick for basically every bad thing that happened um and nick made a response blog so we are going to be watch we're going to be reading through that together and then we have another special treat one that i think will really shed some light on the the, the financial claims yeah we have a lot i know we have a lot to go through this is going to be a this is going to be a juicy drama mama i gotta say but I promise you that those are not, I don't think those things. <laughs> I specifically um, want to apologize to asexual people who feel like I just completely delegitimized you. Um, I didn't hear about this part. Nick being ace, I, I, I know it's kind of like, you know, no two gay people are exactly the same and no two ace people are exactly the same, but I kind of, when it came to that, I would just kind of run with Nick's judgment, um, and his observations and stuff like that. Um, he said asexual people don't face threats of conversion therapy. That's like actually deranged. Asexual people are constantly pressured to not to not be asexual and also asexual people are often subject to the exact same types of conversion therapy as uh as, as you know non-asexual people okay so now i have context for the ace stuff i didn't know about the ace stuff i'm not I'm not trying to throw nick under the bus which a bunch of people dude you totally have been this entire video you have thrown nick under the bus on multiple occasions that's basically all you've done it's actually crazy that he did this again. This is the second time he's just been like, you know, I, I'm not trying to say, I, I'm not trying to say that I killed the person in the room because you're all going to suspect me of killing the person in the other room. And I didn't, but I, you know, I know you're going to say that I did it and you're going to say it because there's so much evidence of me doing it, but I didn't. Saying that I was setting him up as doing, which is not true. Bro, this the whole is, thing. Nick and I were 50 50 partners. This is such bad. At this point, it really truly is just terrible, terribly acted fake crying. Like that is pushing it. It's so not true. No one has ever cried like that on the planet Earth. Not even like, not even like, uh, like those, those Shakespearean actors who go around to children's schools and do like plays like adaptations of Shakespeare plays for kids have this bad acting. Oh my God. It wasn't, I hired him to have a scapegoat or something like that. I never hired Nick. Nick and I were roommates for years before I started doing YouTube videos. And then they started to, people started watching them and I asked Nick if he wanted to help me write them. And he said yes. And we started splitting the, first the AdSense and then the Patreon and then the um, sponsorships. We just split everything. Again, I don't buy it, but whatever. Um, Nick was never <laughs> supposed to be a fall guy. Um... I'm sorry. Maybe I should have waited longer to do this. Um, he says in a pre-recorded, pre-edited video. Who is buying this? No wonder he deleted it. No wonder he didn't want anybody to see this, except he posted it in the first place. How did this leave the editing room? But yeah, I... the. I did not. I don't think those things. I don't. 
And I don't think Nick does either. I think it was just how fast we were writing stuff and how fast we were putting videos out was... Do we really have to react to this? Yes. Yes, we do. And don't worry, you got all kinds of other good stuff too. And we're doing other treats afterwards, so. Just, it was too fast. Um, and uh, we weren't putting the care into them that needed to be put into them. Um, I've seen a lot of people on social media and other YouTubers even lying about me, but um, other, other, Age Bomber guy was not one of them. Just want to be clear about that. Um, oh. Except I was never setting Nick up to be a fall guy and Telos was never a scam. Notice how he keeps saying, this is such a weird liar guy thing to do. It's like, it's like, uh, I was never setting up Nick to be a fall guy. Like, nobody, nobody, I don't think anybody claimed that you were setting Nick up, that you hired him to be a fall guy. The fact of the matter is, you're throwing him under the bus. You are and have been. This entire video has been you saying, basically saying your writer did this, your writer did that, somebody did this, somebody else did that, and then saying Nick's name 18 times in a row. Nick, 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 who is my writer, by the way, the writer who, you know, I just said, I just spent the last 20 minutes saying that they put a bunch of stolen stuff in there, and I just didn't know, but I should have been better and harder on him. Crazy, bro. It was never... Uh, oh, Grime Dango, anything. this has been a wild ride. I, I don't know if you've been here for a while, Grime Dango, but this has been... I can't believe I'm going to say this, but this is an a actually a worse YouTuber apology video than the Miranda Sings one, than the Toxic Gossip one. Holy moly. Like, the Toxic Gossip one was, was more, like, sh it was more, like, bombastic. And I think that's what makes it better. This has just been the most pathetic thing I think I've ever seen. It is just raw bullshitting and him saying, you're gonna say that I'm lying, but I'm not lying. You're gonna say that last thing that I said, which was obviously a lie, is obviously a lie, but it's not a lie. You're gonna say that I'm faking crying. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I'm not. Holy fuck. Anything like that. I swear it was not. It is not. In the next couple of days, I'm going to send out a message to the Tello supporters on Indiegogo and explain the whole situation um, in more detail to them because we were not super clear about everything that was going on with Telos, and so I can, I understand why it seems like we weren't doing anything, but we were. Um, we were doing a lot of work on Telos. Um, we just weren't talking about it because we, we made that initial first announcement for Final Girl and that fell through and I'll explain that to the message I send out to the supporters, which I'm sure will end up on Reddit or somewhere. Um, do we have an owns up to plagiarism counter? Uh, I'd like to see it if it, if that hits one. Um, no, in fact, he the only thing that he's owned up to is to uh, not putting names in the credits. That's the only thing he's owned up to. He he has explicitly avoided ever saying the word plagiarism. He hasn't said the word plagiarism even a single time, and he's only ever said that this is all about not putting names in the credits. And on top of that, which is funny because in H Bomber Guy's video, he explicitly talks about how it isn't just about putting names in the credits. And then on top of that, um, the entire time for all of the actual things um, that even came close to describing plagiarism, he blamed on his writer, Nick. 
his writer, Nick. And we actually are going to be, immediately after we're done watching this, reading Nick's side of the story, which was posted yesterday. Uh, and I didn't even know about that when we went live because it was posted yesterday and I hadn't even seen it yet. So we're going to be reading that. What do you bet that James never actually watched the video in full, seeing as how he's basically doing what H Bomber guy predicted he would in the video? I think that's a real possibility. I think it's a real possibility that James Summerton never actually watched the entire uh, H Bomber guy video because um, this is really giving me uh, the the uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and then you'll say, and then the person says it, and then you're going to say, and then you'll reach into your coat. And then you'll reach up and adjust your glasses and wipe tears that aren't present. J like 100% like JoJo's, just massive JoJo's energy. And uh, after that, we didn't, we didn't want to talk about it too much until we had something really concrete. And I Demon Mama is a JoJo's fan. I'm actually, I'm not a JoJo's fan. I just happen to have been watching some of JoJo's with Doe and Fawn recently. And I watched the, 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 that part of that season where the, where that, that sort of famous scene in the restaurant happens where he's like, and then you're going to say, and uh, yeah, I, I, I have, I, I can't claim to be a JoJo's fan because I haven't watched enough of it. But I've been watching episodes occasionally with Doe and Fawn, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Explain all of that in, in that message. Um, it would. That's the thing, Grime Dango. A ukulele would actually add a layer of sincerity here. And that's the crazy thing. Like, obviously, I'll remind everyone that Colleen, what Colleen Ballinger engaged in was, de was like, by most measures, worse than what, what is on the table for James Summerton. But the quality of apology uh, here is just so much worse. Andrew Blood uh, with the $5 says, Demon Mama, are you going to add his forced blubbering to the soundboard? The forced laugh started the assembly of the forced emotional infinity soundboard. No, because if I did, people would just think there was like a dying animal on my stream whenever I press the button and... That's not the vibe I want to cultivate. Telos was and is not a grift. I was never going to take the money and run. None of the money that came in for Telos was ever going to be paying me or Nick. It was going to be paying queer actors and artists musicians bullshit i know there's been lots of talk about budgets and all of this stuff and people saying that i'm really stupid for thinking that a movie could be made for that little money but there are examples of it being done and i actually do have a work ethic man this is just hitting everything this is just hitting every single spot. <sighs> How dare you talk about having a work ethic when the subject of this, the, the demand of this apology, the, 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 is that you fucking stole dozens of your videos almost in full. How fucking dare you? Anyway, um, but yeah, anyway, um, I do want to keep making videos and I know a lot of you won't watch them and that's, that's fine. Grime Dango says, if this motherfucker got any of the Ontario Creates arts funding that d that then didn't end up going to the amazing arti uh, artists in Ontario, uh, um, uh, I will fucking go full kaiju rage. Jesus Christ. You're right. That, oh my God. Wait, that could actually severely open him up to, um, that could severely open him up to some serious legal trouble. Fuck. But I really liked making videos. 
<clears throat> dude! Dude! We had a lot of videos. Ended up making a lot of videos we didn't want to make. Um, because people were asking for them, and so there were a lot of videos we made that we didn't want to make, and I think those videos are very <laughs> clear on which ones those were. Um, one of them never got officially released. It was released to patrons. Um, some patrons have shared it to other people before all the videos went private. Um, and a lot of people hate the analysis that Nick and I did on it. Um, um, and so what is this a reference to? Does anybody have this video? Does anybody know what video he's referring to? And does anybody have a copy of it? He's talking about his unreleased revolutionary girl Utena video. Wow, it must have been really bad. Is that real or are you memeing on me? Oh, people are saying, oh God, the Utena video. Oh boy, it's real. Oh no. Oh no. How bad would it, how bad would it have to have been? What did he say? Well, I'd have to watch Revolutionary Girl Utena first to know why this video is so bad. That was incredible. Indiegogo is currently digging through Talos pictures and investigating for fraud. Dude might actually end up going to jail on behalf of a H-bomb video. Okay, we'll take a look at that afterwards. We got a lot to do. We better finish this. I haven't seen uh, uh, Revolutionary Girl Utena yet. I've been, it's on my watch list. I have a huge watch list because people recommend stuff to me all the time. But um, Delance says it is the equivalent of the Star Wars Christmas special and how bad it is. Holy shit. If, how bad could the video possibly, that, that bad? Oh man, this must be legendary. Okay, hold on. Is it, le is it legendarily bad in its present presentation? A toxic rivalry. I put a lot of poison in your tea. Okay. We'll have to get back to this in the future. Emu Anon, I owe you. All right, let's continue. We have to get through this. Maybe it's good that that never got properly released because... Maybe it would have hurt people. And I don't want that. Um, but I do want to make videos again sometime. The fact, the fact that he even chose to bring up that he wants to continue making videos in his apology video just proves he has no idea what he's doing here. You do not bring up your own future in your apology video where you significantly damage the futures of multiple other uh, writers, videographers, and creators more generally. Just terrible. Ooh. Oh, yes. We'll get to the Patreon. Do, like, retrospectives on important gay movies. Um, if you watch the channel Be Kind Rewind, they're, they're an amazing channel that do a lot of retrospectives on older Hollywood movies, and I would love to do that for gay movies. A lot, a lot of gay movies, people my age and younger just have never heard of. Things like Torch Song Trilogy and uh, Long Term Companion and stuff like that. Movies from the 70s and 80s and the 90s. and Things that were like really influential for gay cinema that no one talks about. 
and you know t I'd like to talk about those not just those movies but how they got made and stuff like that yeah I think that this section in particular um I I think that this shit in particular this segment is um is to basically uh uh this is this is targeted at um at basically and I hate to say this I don't want to be cruel to them but it's targeted at marks in his audience it's targeted at people who don't want to believe the truth about the situation and who are still trying to be forgiving people who may have basically heard through the grapevine but not actually seen H bomber's video um and he's basically in this part he's promoting stuff that would be emotionally important to them which will make them second guess whether they actually want to unsubscribe or whether they actually want to stop subscribing to his patreon it's actually pretty gross um but i think that's basically what he's doing i i i actually think that's what this purpose this section's purpose is is that um the reason why he's, he's saying like he's saying films that are obviously important and valuable to people um and he's dropping their names and talking about how he wants to do a video about them, um, which means people who maybe only hear about this from some random Twitter posts and from this video in and of itself are basically like, yeah, well, you know, he fucked up, but look, he he's, you know, it was his writer's fault. So I'll keep subscribing. I want to see him talk about these movies that are important to me. Terrible. Killjoy says it's also targeting people who have fear of missing out for qu queer representation in YouTube. A ton of people are emotionally attached to the idea that he's a queer film reviewer and he's trying to play to that. Yeah, yep, I, th I agree with you. Yep, I think that's correct, Killjoy. Um, I would love to do something like that. I swear on my mother's grave. Still no tears. Not a drop of wetness. Bro, that is extra nasty. I literally was just thinking, I was just thinking of the little Joel. The little Joel bit. James, no, please don't do this. James, don't swear on your mother's grave that you're not gonna plagiarize anymore. Don't swear on her grave, James. James, no, James, please don't do that. James, please don't swear on your mother. <laughs> There's grave that you're not gonna plagiarize anymore. Please don't do the James, no! James, please don't talk about the Telos money and how it was all gonna go to artists. If that's true, then you have all the money still because you didn't pay any artists. You didn't make any- <laughs> True! True! Movie, so just give people refunds, but you can't. So just take the, take your scam bucks and go. James, don't do this. Don't swear in your mother's grave, James, please. James, please don't talk about your Patreon. Please don't talk about how you're gonna reactivate your Patreon so that people have ample opportunity to cancel. If you think people still want to support you, which they categorically do not, then you have to start a new Patreon because this one is founded on lies and crimes, James. True! You can't do that. And if you're gonna do it, don't talk about it. Just, just get the money. Just take the money, James. Please just take the money, James. James, all- <laughs> True piece of do. All you needed to do to save your public image. All right, there you go. That's that's little Joel. Uh, and of course, the moment that I heard that, this little Joel video came into my mind. Little Joel is a treasure. If you're not subscribed to little Joel's channel, go right now. I just spammed it in chat a million times. Go do it. Little Joel, also known as Big Joel sometimes. That's his dark personality. His alternate ego is Big Joel. But uh, but yeah. What about Medium Joel? Well, there are medium Joels. In fact, arguably, this is a medium Joel because it's a one minute and thirty-one minute and uh, a one minute and thirty-one second video, which is fairly long for little Joel videos. Little Joel videos are usually just a couple of seconds. You know, they're like thirty seconds or a minute. This one's a whole one minute and thirty. So this could be a medium Joel for all I'm saying. That there will be no copying people. There'll be no copy and pasting. <laughs> Not owning up to it, just saying he won't do it in the future. Not actually owning up to having done it, still has avoided actually owing up, owning up to it. Every source will be cited in a document and on screen. 
No one cares. They care about the fact that you've been lying for the last fucking years. Two, three years, however long. We don't know how far back the plagiarism goes. Nobody cares if you're gonna do more videos in the future. Nobody can trust you and nobody will ever trust you and nobody should ever trust you. Jesus Christ. I actually liked doing research. No, you didn't. You just said you didn't do research. Oh my God, in this video, he said he never did the research, that it was Nick who did the research, that he never did it. What a fucking liar, man. Dude, what a fraud. Just a total fraud. I'm sorry, this is infuriating. I loved doing research, reading the books and articles and stuff like that. I, the part of me that was lazy was the copy and paste part. Instead of just putting it into my words and just citing them properly and giving them credit, that's where I... No, dude, Let's... it's not about put... Oh my God, saying putting it into your own words. Reading somebody, copying their take and putting it into your own words is still fucking plagiarism. It's still fucking unoriginal garbage. You're still misleading your audience. Okay. Let me just, okay, let me just talk about something, okay? There are two, well, there's many types, but there are two main types of, like, art analysis, okay? There's the type, like what I did earlier in this stream, where I talk about a game that I've played and my personal thoughts about it and how I feel about it, and I barely reference anybody else. The only thing in my little rant about pet play in Metal Gear Solid Five was me just saying I couldn't stand all the garbage articles, like like clickbait articles that were written at the time that made people approach the game more stupidly. That's the only reference I even made. That's one type. There's another type, which is basically where you dive really deep on a particular piece and you read what tons and tons of other people said about it and you make your own argument. You don't just say what they say. You don't just agree 100% with somebody else because they did that. If you just agree 100% with what, with what somebody else said, they already did it. Just plug their thing. Just say, I read this great book about it. I think they're 100% right. Instead, the type that is engaging with all these different ones is usually to build a counter or some sort of uh, building off of what other people said. Hey, here's what somebody such and such wrote. Here's what Demon Mama spoke about Metal Gear Solid Five. Here's what I think that she missed. Here's what I think that she got right. Here's what I think that uh, I, here's what I think in response to that. That's the other type, okay? Those are like the types of art critique that you do. Th this idea of just like reading somebody's book and then putting it into your own words, that's literal baby shit. That's actual baby brain bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. Oh my God. That's where the laziness came in. That was, it, I, I wasn't trying to be malicious. That was. I'm getting there, Uncle Gumbald. And you wanna know what? Sorry, I'm gonna interrupt one more time, okay? One more fucking time, okay? Because you motherfuckers, you all roast me for every single goddamn piece of media in the entire fucking planet full of billions of people that I haven't seen. Oh, you haven't seen this? You must be so stupid. <laughs> You're so pathetic. Well, guess what? One day I will have read it and then you won't have anything left. Your material? Gone. What are you going to type into chat anymore, huh? What are you going to type into chat anymore when I've seen the thing? You're going to go, oh, 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 shit. I don't know what to say. Oh, oh, no. I've spent so much time over the last few months saying, your dear mama's stupid for not having seen this. You're going to have nothing. You're going to have nothing. You got nothing. It'll never happen because you'll still be reacting to this video. Oh, okay. All right. You still got it, Go Uncle Gumball. Fair. All right. You got it. That was a good one. You, you, maybe you have a shot. Maybe you got a shot. Maybe you'll survive. 
just laziness. And I promise for anyone who does watch the videos that I make going forward, I promise that will never happen again. Bullshit. And I welcome the highest level of scrutiny on the on the new videos. Oh, now, remember how before he was saying, uh, I hope that in the future maybe I can get back to making videos, and now he's saying there's going to be more videos? I'm, I'm going to be making new videos? Dude, bullshit. Fucking bullshit. I'm going to need you guys. I'm seriously going to need you guys. Okay, listen. I need my imps. I need you guys on Plagiarism Watch, okay? Kotaku, Polygon. Uh, I don't know the other video game websites that people go to anymore. Reddit and James Summerton, okay? If they fucking plagiarize... If you see those motherfuckers stealing my rant about Metal Gear Solid Five, you need to tell me, okay? You need to tell me so that I can... Uh, so that I can, I can, I can show up with my, my big piece of shrapnel out of my head and go, you stole it and you know it. Keep your eyes peeled. If J, can you, oh God, no, listen, I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be mean. The worst part, okay, no, I'm going to be mean. I'm going to be really mean, okay? One of the most offensive parts about all of this is that James Summerton has zero swag. He took things that had swag and he filtered them through his lack of swag. Isn't that disgusting? You want to know what it reminds me of? I'm not even joking with you. It reminds me, and you're, you're all going to go, oh, of course it reminds you of something from this. It reminds me of Dark Souls 3. Okay? It reminds me of a boss in Dark Souls 3, okay? You guys know this motherfucker? Here we go. You guys are going to go, oh man, this is a total fit, okay? I'm, I'm serious, though. It reminds me of this guy from Dark Souls 3. Some of you are going to guess it in advance. But he reminds me of Aldrich. You know, Aldrich, the giant... Uh, the giant, uh, the, the priest who ate so many other people that he turned into a giant uh, a, a blob of, of uh, a humanity rot. And he was envious of the beauty of Gwendolyn. And so he tried to eat Gwendolyn and he had become so powerful from all of the bodies that he had stolen that he was able to overpower Gwendolyn and then puppeted his body. So when you go to fight Aldrich, you actually fight like a crappy version of Gwendolyn being puppeted by the giant blob. Look, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The world, things appear differently in the world. But I, I think there's some, uh, I think there's some resemblance here. Don't you? for Patreon. Um, I'm going to reactivate it um, because I saw a lot of people on social media saying that I was probably going to reactivate it right on January 1st so that everyone could get a surprise billing and I could take the money and run. Um, and no... So you did it seven days before January 1st? Nine days, technically. You did it nine days before January 1st instead? <laughs> he did it again, by the way. Can I just be clear? He did it again. Mr. Krabs, why are you posting such a monstrous link? Why are you posting such a monstrous link? Mr. Krabs says, the link I was trying to send was an Im image of Kevin the Sea Cucumber. Oh my god, you're actually right. He does kind of look like Kevin the Sea Cucumber. 
Oh my god! Oh my oh my god! He it's given Kevin the sea cucumber! Oh no! And much like Kevin, his attitude at the beginning of this saga versus his attitude at the end is a drastic change from arrogance to humility. Mango has the best current meme. Oh! <laughs> destroyed absolutely obliterated i'm never going to be able to see it the same again it is literally is oh it's just the fucking limp flop oh god oh first of all that was never my plan and I'm not going to do it. I'm going to reactivate it now so that anyone who wants to leave, which I imagine will be the vast majority, can leave and not have to be worried about being billed again in January. Oh, man. Oh, my God. How many they got? Oh, no. They're fucking destroying him on Blue Sky. Oh, they got him from, they got him from Doug. Oh, Jesus. They got him. It's actually funny because the, this one isn't, as, isn't even as limp. Well done. Well done, Beyond Safe Words. Holy shit. Um... Sorry, hold on. I missed him say to something. Do it. I'm going to reactivate it now so that anyone who wants to leave, which I imagine will be the vast majority, can leave and not have to be worried about being billed again in January. Okay. Um, okay. Um, let's just be 100% real here. Hold on a second. Um, this is complete and complete and utter bullshit. This is the most bullshit thing that has been said possible, like, like possibly ever. Um, I, the reasoning of, I am going to reactivate my Patreon seven, sorry, uh, nine days before the next billing period so that you can leave it is actually um the most just so blatantly dishonest first of all there's going to be a ton of people who have not been plugged in there might be people who are working their jobs there might be people who are traveling there might be people um who who just don't spend that much time following other things like this who might never have even seen the apology who are going to get charged now charged for work that is fraudulent and Big Joel was 100% correct to say that the only answer, if you really if you really feel that you need to make a new Patreon because you must make new videos, the only honest answer, and I mean this, the only honest answer is to make a totally new Patreon and have people opt into it, not set people up for an opt out. It's actually so disgustingly scummy that he would do this. It's genuinely, um, the hubris is insane. And it's obvious that he knows that he's hoping to get some rent money out of it.
I don't know. I don't know if that's actually a violation of the rules of Patreon, but I imagine that Patreon has anti-plagiarism policies. I think this is a disgustingly scummy um, and dishonest thing to do, and he is flatly lying. This is perhaps the biggest lie that he's told in this entire video and also the most disgusting lie. It's absolutely terrible of him to throw Nick under the bus, but in truth, we don't yet really know how much Nick was involved. So there's possible, it's possible there's a nugget of truth in what he said about Nick. We'll find out. But this, this lie is nothing short of greed. This lie is a, a pathetic attempt to create plausible deniability to throw up a smoke screen for how he is about to steal a bunch of people's money. And yes, I believe it is stealing. These people, it has been exposed that his videos have been created on fraudulent grounds. And he is now opening it right before the new billing period with the absolutely most laziest excuse possible of, oh, I want people to be able to cancel. Hey, guess what? If you don't ever reactivate your Patreon, they will never get charged. Wow, it's magical how that works. If you keep your Patreon deleted, no one will ever get charged. It's almost like you are desperately clinging to the income. You're desperately clinging to the pre-existing people there. You're desperately clinging to the people who have perhaps forgotten that they have a subscription to you already. You're desperately clinging to people who won't see this apology in time because you fucking deleted it. And that's even more sinister because now he's reactivated the Patreon and the apology in which he explains the reasoning is gone. So people don't even know that it's been reactivated. He's actually created the situation he claims he wants to avoid. I.E. he's fucking lying. A no questions asked, no wiggle room whatsoever. This is a fucking disgusting lie. And it is a disgusting lie that he makes money from. Absolutely fucking pathetic. His statement on his channel doesn't mention the Patreon either. Jesus. Um. Wait, let's check his Patreon right now. So, in closing, um, I, again, incredibly sorry. How do you see the uh, front-facing Patreon? Did he re did he reprivate it? And again, I'm not sorry because I was caught. I'm sorry because So I he has since taken it back down? Did he even post on Patreon at all? I mean, he it's actually I can't believe it, but if he actually leaves it down, then that would be the best thing that he could do. It appears it appears he's reprivated it as of yesterday. Let me see. Maybe hold on, let's check on the twenty first. Let's check. So it looks like evening of the 21st. Okay, he took it back down in the evening of the 21st. It was up. It was up. With no post, no public post about this whatsoever. Here, I can prove it. Okay, hold on. Real quick. As of, uh, as of the 21st at, in the morning, it was up and there were still 2,933 members. So I want you to imagine 2,933 people all remembering to go unsubscribe in nine days. That's how absurd his lie was. Now, thankfully, as of right now, his... 
uh, his his Patreon is currently back down again. So he put it open, he opened it back up, and now he has taken it back down, which is, of course, like I said, the only correct response. Sirius says, what did he say about Nick? I saw Nick defending James. Um, yes, this entire video has been throwing Nick under the bus. He claimed that basically all of the plagiarism was done by Nick. He didn't call it plagiarism, but he said basically all of the bad stuff was done by Nick and that his mistake was that he's the face of the channel and he should have caught it and been harder on Nick. He still threw Nick under the bus this entire video. We're actually going to look at Nick's response in just a little bit. What did he just say? All right, let's let's continue. Not have to be worried about bill, being billed again in January. Um, yeah. So. In closing. Um. I, again, incredibly sorry. For, two, sorry for, to whom? Not one time, not one time has he done that. Not one time has he said, I am sorry for X to name. Not once. And again, I'm not sorry because I was caught. I'm sorry because I honestly didn't know how much I was hurting people. Dude, come on. He did it again. That's the fifth time he's done that. And how much harm I was bringing to the community because that's not... Do not write in the papers that I'm sorry that I got caught. Whatever you do, do not say it. It is not true. I'm not sorry because I got caught. I promise. Ever what I intended. I wanted the channel to be a safe place. I spent so much time deleting comments that were hateful. I've recently found out that I wasn't being notified about, that I wasn't seeing comments that were in replies to other comments, so there were plenty of hateful comments what? in the comment section that I wasn't seeing that were plenty hateful. And I didn't know that. Uh -huh. Um. But I wanted the I wanted the channel to be a safe place. And it ended up not being a safe place. It didn't end up that way. You made it not a safe place. You did that personally. You did that. That was you. You you should what he should be saying is here, I made it not a safe place. And for the misinformation, that kind of falls into two categories. One, I, I did the wrong research into historical things and other things, they're not what I wrote. Um, again, thank you to H Bomber Guy and his team for making the fund for the writers. Um, I'd like to try to contribute to that somehow. So if, if it's okay to make the videos public and send all of the uh, public again and send all, it won't be all the videos because some of them had to be taken down because sponsors wanted them um, taken down. Why don't but you I give them the sponsor money, huh? Put the videos back up. It's pathetic. With the sources properly uh, put in either. No, this is not an acceptable answer. First of all, we already talked about how it would just be pennies. He's basically offering to throw a couple of dimes into a fund. Um, but also, um, 
the videos being up increases the likelihood of people coming across his work and being completely unaware of the fact that it's fucking fraudulent bullshit. That's, that's another massive problem. And he's hoping that he can do that because there's a chance that two, three years from now, people watch his videos and all the other ones that he's put out and completely forget or are just new people to his channel that never knew about this garbage. But that's not okay. That's not okay. For the, I guess for the videos that would be going up from zero, I could um, actually put sources like in the videos, which would be good. Um, for the other ones that would just be made live again, I could put them in a, a pinned comment because I, th I think people read pinned comments more than they read the descriptions. Cause descriptions like disappear in a lot of places. Um, <laughs> Something like that, something so that I can try and it won't make up for what I did, but it's just something. Um, so I'm really, really, really sorry. Let's see if his face gets wet at all. I heard a lot of people oh, that he's I really trying. Respect. He's definitely trying to make his face wet here. This is the driest face I've ever seen on somebody who's supposedly crying for 40 minutes. He tried. He really squeezed his eyes there. That really sucks. And, um... Nick, if you're watching this, I don't, I don't, you're probably not, but I want you to know I miss you. And, um... Anything? Yeah, I want to do better. I want, I want to do better. I want to prove that I can do better. I don't expect anyone to just give me the benefit of the doubt. He should have turned around to grab one of these books so that he could cite it live on air and while he was back there, do one of the little, you know, put a little drop in his eye. Bloop. And then spin around and be like, look, <laughs> sorry, I just couldn't ha help myself. I needed to cite this book. See, I'm, I'm improving. You can see I'm citing the book. Here's the book and I'm citing it. And then he would also get the fake tear in there too. But I want to show that I can do better. I hope you'll let me do that. Exactly, Sirius. I brought that up earlier. That he should, uh, that that multiple times here, he just avoids, the, he tries to step around the fact that he knows who he stole from and he should be giving to them directly, not trying to make this fucking public show about giving to H-Bomber guy. He's trying to get H-Bomber guy's fan base off yeah. of his ass is what he's trying to do with that. He's trying to throw the ball into H-Bomb's court, really which is sorry. pathetic. I'm sorry about the things I did. I'm sorry that I disappointed you. I promise going forward I, w I will do better. Um, thanks for watching. Did you see him actually? I didn't see and anything um, get actually wiped away. Got a little bit of... Hey, wait, we saw some wetness. I saw some wetness on his face. Hold on a second. Rewind. We got wetness, everybody. We got wetness. Watch his lips. He drooled. So we know we can see wetness. Hey, he's got some drool there. We, we know we can see it. We know we can see the wetness now. We've proved it. There's no wetness anywhere else. I'm really sorry. All right, everybody. That was, uh, yeah, he got a little, he started salivating thinking about the Patreon money. Jesus Christ. Um, that was terrible. That was an abominable apology video.
Um, probably the worst we've ever seen in the history of the channel. I think Colleen Ballinger's was more like instantaneously cringe, but this one was more disgusting. Um, just rotten. What a rotten video to even put out. And the idea he thought he could get away with reactivating the Patreon. Jesus Christ. But we're not done. This is a drama mama after all. We don't just stop after we react to a video because we have more. Specifically, we have something very important to react to. Which, initially, I didn't even know it existed until today because it was only published last night and I was informed that it existed. Which means you all are going to be seeing something hot and fresh right off the presses. Now, throughout this apology, one of the recurring themes was blaming his writer, Nick. But I have been made aware that Nick wrote a blogged response to this video. And I think it's only fair that we hear Nick's response in his own words. Now, of course, a lot of this, a lot of what is discussed behind closed doors will never be able to be verified. But I, for, for sure. Uh, but I think that it's important that we at least hear Nick out, especially because so many claims have been levied against Nick. Um, it's actually wild how much James Somerton threw his, his supposed friend under the bus. And um, I can completely understand why Nick would go no contact. Nick, uh, in fact, I think that's the wise choice. I think going no contact with somebody who intends to throw you under the bus, who has been throwing, him, uh, throwing you under the bus, and who uh, has been taking all the money and totally intends to make everything worse for you, going no contact is a very wise choice, in my opinion. However, without any further ado, let us watch Nick's response. So this is from nthergot.com. This is Nick's blog. And this says, response released 21st of December, 2023. So without any further ado, let's go right into it. I would like again to express my sincerest sympathy to the writers and creators who were harmed by the, by the theft of their creative property and the supporters who rightfully feel betrayed. Let me be clear. I unequivocally condemn acts of plagiarism. Off the cuff already a hundred times better than James Somerton's response. Notice how James Somerton never said the word plagiarism once in the video? Interesting that, right? Very weird that in his apology video for plagiarism that was a response to a video massively and unequivocally accusing him of plagiarism, he never once said the word plagiarism. Nick already responds in the first two sentences and openly acknowledges the word and the act itself. The nature of my contributions to this YouTube channel were to editorialize and reflect upon a given piece of media. I can say with confidence that my independent contributions were authentically my own. However, I apologize for not taking a more active role to ensure the channel's body of work was authentic. Interesting. That's, that's, I think this is already more... This is already more acknowledging the actual problem. I apologize for not taking a more active role to ensure the bo channel's body of work was authentic, taking ownership. In regard to the money, not perfect, but better. In regard to the money raised to fund film projects through Telos Productions, these generous donations were made in good faith. As such, I believe they should be returned immediately and in full to all donors. I have never had access to the Indiegogo account nor any of its funds. Therefore, I can only trust that the account holder will do the right thing from here. I think he should have named James Somerton here. He should have, in my opinion, he should have said the account holder, James Somerton, will do the right thing from here. But obviously, the implication is pretty obvious. Finally, I would like to outline what you can expect from me next. In the immediate future, I will be taking time off to reflect, process, and learn from this incident. Mental health and well-being are paramount, and I hope anyone who is suffering will seek out professional support. 
Two, though my current employment remains uncertain, I am approaching this as an opportunity to invest in my personal writing projects. I am looking forward to reigniting my passion for fiction writing and investing my creative energy into new projects. I am excited to reconnect with the characters and stories from my first novel, Gentleman's Club, as well as continue to add to my overall body of work. Three, I also hope for the opportunity to continue to foster the authentic connections I found within the queer community by creating a new space that explores, validates, and celebrates queer identity. It is my hope that my future contributions to queer art will help rekindle a sense of community. I will be posting updates about my works in progress via my website and social media channels in the coming months. Sincere, sin sincere regards, Nick Hergott. And this was the one that was a direct response to, uh, uh, to this was from December 6th, so earlier this month, and this is in response to H Bomber Guy's video. We're going to read this here as well. I am writing in response to the video essay Plagiarism and YouTube, released earlier this week by H Bomber Guy, exposing mass plagiarism throughout the James Somerton channel. The evidence of unethical conduct provided in the video is undeniable. Damn, already already a hundred times stronger than James Somerton. The, the, un, the evidence of unethical conduct provided in the video is undeniable. Bam. These actions are acutely alarming to me, both professionally and personally. Due to the glaring disparity in our, personal, our professional ethic, ethics, I have ended my ties with the James Somerton channel, as well as my longtime association with James Somerton. I am also advocating that James offer a full and immediate refund to each of the Indiegogo donors who contributed to Telos Pictures. Plagiarism is personal in its violating effect. As a writer, it's one of my greatest fears. I am in disbelief that a friend as close as James would have disregarded these fears. In light of these irrefutable actions, I am now deeply pained to have been associated with the James Somerton channel as a content contributor. I was shocked by the widespread nature of the plagiarism in James' videos. I cannot overstate how foolish I feel for trusting that James' intentions and ethics were in line with my own. I have scrutinized my own contributions to the channel over the past few days. Although I can say with confidence that my independent contributions were authentically my own, I cannot help my a myself ask myself, how did I miss this? Transparency and integrity are essential traits for authentic writing. This controversy has me falling short of that mark. I expect better of myself, and I will use this experience to strive for better accountability in all my future professional endeavors. This evidence exposed a vital truth for me and presented a stark reality for my future hopes as a writer, but it also provided the catalyst I need to leave the channel and find more fulfilling work. I have learned a very heartbreaking lesson that will motivate me to be a better judge of character and a stronger advocate for authenticity. To all writers whose creative works have been stolen and to the loyal and trusting supporters of the James Somerton channel, I am profoundly sorry for any part I have had in this shameful but unwitting breach of trust. I want to express my remorse for not taking a more active role to ensure the body of work was authentic and that the individual I associated with was trustful. I am heartened to see that Kat and Harris have taken steps to generate exposure for talented queer content creators whose hard work and creativity was rendered invisible by plagiarism. In the link below, you will find a Google form that will allow you to recommend queer YouTubers who will be compiled into a playlist to give them the exposure they deserve. Thank you, Kat, for doing this. And here's the Google do here's the Google document. Damn, I didn't even know that this form existed. One of their best or gayest videos. Didn't I put out a video on the queer themes of Metal Gear Solid 5? Anyway. Um Okay, so uh Nick's uh, uh, Nick's response and apology is significantly like towers above James Somerton's. Now, um, it's really hard in here to tell, um, like what actually went on behind the scenes, but Nick, uh, Nick has put his, his, you know, be, has put his, his money where his mouth is, so to say completely disassociated, completely denounced the channel, uh, directly addressed the claims, directly um, uh, uh, directly apologized for having for granting any credence to it and for co contributing to a bad project, um, undeniably denounces it and also calls for a very specific call to action 
to release the funds back to the Indiegogo donors. So there are still questions to be asked with regard to Nick's involvement. It is definitely very um, possible. Um, it is definitely very possible that Nick did engage in, in at least some uh, of the plagiarism that happened. However, Nick's uh, uh, approach to addressing it is significantly better, and we have no reason whatsoever to trust James Summerton. Wait, so James Summerton posted a text response? Oh my god. Here we go. Well, well, actually, we'll read this in just a second. I want to finish my thoughts on Nick. It is it is possible that Nick actually did write some of these scripts. We don't know what happened. We would perhaps need to have somebody else from behind the scenes come forward to be able to testify as to whether it was James or Nick who wrote most of these things. Um, but we might never know the answer to that question. It's just a reality. If you're right, if you're two people working on a on a project that is released under under a specific name, if you're basically working as at least in part as an editor um, and a a ghostwriter, at you know to some degree, um, the reality is that there might be nobody else privy to what was going on, but. Nick directly says, I did not do, I did not write any of that stuff. I did not write any of the scripts that included plagiar plagiarizing. None of that was my work. And uh, we have much, we have no reason to trust James Summerton. And, uh, and James Summerton has basically attempted to throw Nick under the bus for everything while refusing to actually address them. So what this comes down to is a measure of credibility. And Nick has more credibility than James Summerton at this point by a long shot. In addition to the fact that at the end of the day, the buck stops with James Summerton because it's his channel and his name on the channel. It is possible that Nick uh, was more involved in the plagiarism than uh, he's admitting in his own apology and that he's also trying to save his own skin. I think that's possible. That's a real possibility. Um, but I find it incredibly suspect the fact that James Summerton has essentially tried to throw Nick under the bus for everything and also refused to even say the word plagiarism. Um, and Nick has a lot more to lose um, in that uh, uh, Nick is is Nick does not have any platform that he could recover if he even if he wanted to. Uh, and being associated with a project uh, that is publicly recognized for being um, for for including a ton of plagiarism. Um, as it turns out, can do some pretty severe damage to your professional reputation. Um, so while it is possible that there's stuff that happened behind the scenes that we don't know, um, we have, we, we, all that we can really do as outside observers is make a call based on someone's comparative credibility. And I think that it's fairly, um, obvious between the two apologies, which apology is more credible. Uh, Nick directly addressed the claims, uh, put forward a call to action to make to make uh, to fix things for the people who were hurt. Directly acknowledged some, at least some of the people who were hurt, um, and also uh, uh, was not afraid to use the actual uh, words of the accusation, the word plagiarism. James Summerton was completely unwilling to do that. C uh, attempted to essentially put all blame on someone else who cannot be held accountable conveniently. Um, and has offered no real solution uh, besides a way that also makes him a whole bunch of money and gives him a way to come back. Very interesting, right? Yeah, um, some people are pointing out some of the messages that, that were sent here. These were sent, um, these were sent shortly after, this was sent shortly after the H Bomber Guy video dropped. Um, uh, Nick is Glitterfawn. H Bomber Guy makes it clear that he does not think Nick did any plagiarism. And then Glitterfawn says, Of course not, because I don't read. I don't even watch other YouTubers. And these days, neither does James. Okay, we're going to let you in on a ta channel secret. You heard it here, folks. I don't do research. Todd was more critical of Nick. Yeah, um, the Todd video does, uh, does criticize Nick. Um, but it mostly criticizes Nick for uh, misinformation as opposed to plagiarism. And that actually, believe it or not, that actually lines up with Nick's claims. Um, because uh, it's still bad. It's 
it's still bad to make up something to to do to spread misinformation on the internet. It's still bad to say uh like to make up a fake historical fact, but it isn't plagiarism. And Nick said everything that I said was original, even maybe the wrong information. <laughs> It's terrible. He just kind of admits to what Todd said. Yeah, it's more like, I'm not a thief. I'm just kind of a liar. It, this is kind of a weird situation. So again, to sort of et, wrap wrap up the Nick section, um, Nick very much was in the role of an employee and a background collaborator. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. He could have been, um, uh, unless, unless James Somerton... Now, there is a, there is a world in which... Um, in which Nick could be proven and James Somerton could have been like exonerated, which is that if James Somerton could prove that Nick was the one who was writing the uh, all of the scripts and could prove that Nick was lying about the plagiarism, um, but even that would still not fully exonerate James Somerton because James Somerton ultimately not only stamped his his approval on all of the scripts, but also put his face to it, his name to it, and made money personally off of it. He built himself a presence and a uh, uh, a following off of that work. So even if that was true, um, it would be bad, but he still didn't handle it correctly. It would, however, exonerate, uh, it would, however, exonerate him of the worst of the plagiarism claims. However, I think the reason why James Somerton chose to do this video is fairly obvious because that evidence doesn't exist. I don't think James Som I think if James Somerton could prove that Nick actually wrote these scripts, he would have done it already because it would have been objectively good for him to do so. If James could prove that Nick Somerton was or, or <laughs> Nick Somerton that Nick was the writer of all of these scripts uh, instead of just claiming it with no evidence, he should he would have done that. It would have made his case um, it would have, it would have made his case significantly better, but he didn't, which means I don't think the evidence exists. And I think that if the evidence doesn't exist, it is reasonable to conclude that it was likely James Somerton, who was the most, the, uh, most likely the plagiarist or the primary plagiarist. I don't think that this brings Nick off the hook entirely. However, Nick's apology is significantly better anyway. Yes, they do filthy. Filthy says some word processing program save who edited that in a doc history like metadata. If he were to pull those on the program, provided he has the capacity to do that, wouldn't wouldn't that be the proof? Yes, it actually is possible. Most collaborative writing programs do show edit history. Google Docs does this. Uh, Microsoft Word does this. Most editing, uh, most word processors of any. Uh, um, of any quality, not only save document history, but will also show which users were editing when and what changes were submitted by a user. Um, it's fairly common practice to track changes to a document in case something happens to a file and you need to fix it. Um, so again, I, I think that that kind of shows the likelihood that this evidence doesn't exist or that the evidence that does exist shows that it was all written by James Somerton. Otherwise, it would have been almost trivial for James to come forward and put that forward. Anyway, that was a bit wordy, but I think that I hope my analysis stands up and makes sense. Also, some people are pointing out that some of the plagiarism predates uh, when Nick started writing for the channel. Didn't H Bomber guy say that the plagiarism predated him hiring Nick? I don't remember that claim, but... Uh, if you have a link to that particular moment, you might be right. I, I do believe that to be possible. There's no way to, uh, Sirius says, there's no way to exonerate James fully. Some of it was his. Yeah, I, I might, uh, I might, I, I don't recall that exact segment word for word. So I might be forgetting one particular thing. Regardless, my position on Nick uh, stands and it's time to move on to the next thing. The next thing being this post that James Somerton made to his community page yesterday. Earlier tonight, I uploaded a video apologizing for what I've done. Still doesn't say what he did and to whom. 
but it's become clear after hearing from several people that I am not in a healthy frame of mind to be posting anything online. Self-centered again. I only returned home from the hospital yesterday, so I should have never filmed it. That's true, you shouldn't have. Still self-centered. I have deleted the video, but I'm sure it has been downloaded and will be shared by others online. You are correct. You are absolutely correct. Of course it will be, and it should be. You are on the line for having lied, stolen from, misrepresented, and made money off of dishonesty. Um, yeah, absolutely. I promise to apologize properly and in detail when I'm more mentally stable. Until then, please know that I am sorry. Wow, that is fucking pathetic. Who The apology for the apology being literally falling into the same problems as the apology itself. That's actually wild. That's a new level of like meta apologizing. Apologizing for the apologize apology video and repeating the same mistakes that made you want to take down the apology video in the first place. Wow, we are on next level of incompetence and stupidity, aren't we? Jesus Christ. Well, n hey, now you know there's probably going to be another drama mama in the future when he drops his second apology. I don't think, I don't know that it matters, Prozy Rosie. I don't know that it matters. Ugh. We're not done yet, though. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. We are, oh, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. We're not done yet. Remember how I said that we were going to talk about, uh, remember how I said that we were going to talk about some of the, um, some of the financial claims. Well, 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 that's what we're going to do right now. So before James Somerton's apology was taken down, the very, very popular and well-recognized video essayist, Folding Ideas, also known as Dan Olson, left this comment on the apology. I'm going to read it out right now. This is Folding Ideas. When you said your channel was teetering on the edge of extinction and then replaced your Ursa Mini Pro G2 with an FX6 a few weeks later, was that a lie about your financial situation or just a profoundly reckless use of money that your patrons believed was intended to keep you from being homeless? That's a very, very good question. And... If you feel like this is kind of small, and you're like, huh? Mini Pro G2 FS6, what could he possibly be talking about? Well, you see, there's been a thread written about it. Now, this thread was originally posted on December 4th, and we are going to read through it together, because I think that it's very telling about the financial claims that James Somerton meant, uh, uh, stated. And, um, and... Something that has been a recurring feature with uh, with this entire thing has been James Summerton sort of fixating on the financial uh, on the fina financial aspects and being very very vague, but insisting that no, I'm certainly not making all that much money, and the money's all gone. There's no money. I can't. I can't possibly. The only thing that I can offer is the shitty ad revenue from videos that I really want to put back up so that I can restore my presence on the internet and hopefully people will forget about it. And that's basically all that he's been able to offer despite the fact that a lot of money has been given to James Somerton that doesn't really have a paper trail as to where it went. Well, thankfully, Dan Olson, aka Foldable Human, wrote a very interesting thread about just this on December 4th. And we're going to revisit this thread because I think it's very relevant to this apology. So let's do it. Okay, so back in April, I snapped at James Summerton in reply to a tweet that was linking to this video, which James has since delisted but not deleted. I believe it has now actually been deleted. Yep, it's actually been deleted now. And I want to talk to you about the full context of that, but I really don't want to make a video. So put your beat down memes away. The first bit of context is that I initially got keyed into James to fact check his claims about indie filmmaking in Canada. 
As a filmmaker, the entire Telos venture was immediately obvious as a juvenile fantasy dreamed up by someone with no idea how to make a movie. Just wild claims about their plans that weren't even worth debunking because they bordered on not even wrong. But in watching one of these pitch videos, I noticed that he had a $4,000 current gen camera in the background as a prop, and that seemed both pretentious and weird. Do you smell what I smell? You don't use your best camera as a prop. You use your second best camera as a prop. So being an obsessive weirdo, weirdo, I needed to know, and I watched his BTS stuff until I spotted his main rig, a $6,000 camera with about $1,000 attached in accessories. Now these in isolation are unremarkable because his Patreon at the time was bringing in about $8,000 per month. His channel was a full-on business business, so investing in some professional equipment of that level is maybe a bit indulgent, but certainly justifiable following so far? What was weird is that he doesn't shoot multicam, he doesn't shoot outdoors, he doesn't shoot on location, and in a studio the two cameras kind of really step on each other's toes. Basically if you already have one and don't need a B cam, there's no reason to get the other. If you guys notice, I don't have uh, two cameras set up in here because I have no space in here. <laughs> It, it having two gigantic film cameras and keep in mind six five four to six thousand dollar uh sorry four and six thousand dollar cameras respectively are film cameras they're big they're bulky he's not lying about the fact that it doesn't really make much sense unless you have something specific you want to do like for example someday when i have more room i would like to set up a b cam so that you guys can so i can switch to that b cam and you guys can see my hands as i'm playing piano that would be cool, very specific need, and I would be using cameras more like this one. You know, a little DSLR uh, uh, that is certainly not $6,000. Uh, a little DSLR that I could capture stuff with. Oh, sorry about that, I'm not leaking it. Anyway. Um, Again, this on its own says nothing. It's just indicative of poor financial decisions. Maybe um, impulsive purchasing, aka gear acquisition syndrome. Biblical sins, but not crimes. Paired with the constantly inflating fantasy scope of, t of the Telos films, it was clearly an expression of a very, very common bad filmmaker habit of, if I just get the right gear, then my movie will basically make itself. He's 100% right here. That is a very common bad filmmaker habit. Buying stuff because it feels like progress. Incredible how often that happens. And almost everyone is, is slightly guilty of it at some point or another. A gear acquisition syndrome is, is, is a real deal. Most people don't get it too bad, but yeah, it happens. At the end of February, he tweets, I want to start shooting anamorphic. And then three weeks later in March, he posts the worst out of focus, underexposed, I just got a new lens video I've ever seen showing off his trash covered bedroom. Based on what's available for his cameras and the lead time, that's enough time to get a Leowa na Nanomorph or a Siri Saturn from B&H, but not enough time to get a Great Joy from the UK or a Vazen from Ch China. And with the firing blah blah, with the flaring blah blah blah, $1,300 $1, lens. That's the estimate that Dan Olson is giving. Again, gear acquisition syndrome is not a crime, and these, legend, these lenses are ultimately budget options. I know that sounds shocking, but it's true. Lenses are insanely expensive, okay? Um, when This is a fun fact about filmmaking that a lot of people don't know. Um... But in the sort of glory, the, in, the, in the golden era of, of, of film film, like when things were being shot on film and not on, on video, um, directors of photography uh, would bring their own lenses. So a, a production house 
would basically expect a well-established and famous director of photography to essentially come with their own lenses. And that would be a part of the pay that you would pay to a director of photography. A director of photography would, would own a chest full of insanely expensive lenses um, and they and and when you hired that director of photography, you would expect them to be coming with um, a, a whole set of lenses that they knew how to use. And some of those lenses could be as expensive as a hundred thousand um, dollars. It's actually insane how expensive lenses are. But if you think about it, they're they're unbelievably complex. Lenses are um, are still very very difficult to produce. They are. They require an incredible amount of technical precision, um, and they're very fragile. Lens gets that expensive? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yep. They are made with like uh, extremely precision grinded glass, and they are stacked together to be as compact as possible while delivering what you want out of them. Very, very, very expensive, very difficult to make, and they require a level of expertise that is rare to, to achieve. What do you even get with an expensive lens, lens compared to a budget lens? Um, the most beautiful transformation of, of visuals that you can possibly imagine. A skilled director of photography equipped with a master craft lens um, un unironically can produce images that you could... That, that is difficult to even describe how how much uh, uh, focal how much uh, focal complexity you can achieve and how much uh, clarity of of image you can receive. Um, yes. Um, now, for a lot of productions, it's not necessary to have lenses of that level. But if you're trying to create a film, if you're trying to create something that is a uh, you know that is aspiring to be a true work of art that level of uh of complexity um yes yes killjoy that's a pretty good example an off the cuff example it's the difference between lord of the rings and the barrel scene from the hobbit um a lot of movies now um there is a ton of post production uh cgi that is applied even in s scenes that seem common and um and and, and it shows you get these you get these scenes that don't feel real because there's a bunch of stuff that has been um that has been sort of fixed or added in post processing and it, and to an untrained eye you might not notice it immediately but your brain did um and and again there's just there's so many examples of this there are also certain shots that can only be gotten with certain types of cameras um for example if you're trying to shoot, shoot certain um certain scenes that are in an outdoor environment, um, you might need to have the camera a certain distance away from your actors, but you might be wanting to preserve a very specific look. Um, and you need expensive lenses for that. And yeah, oh yeah, people are talking about lenses that are used for sports stuff. Um, yeah, because part of the reason why lenses for sports, for sports photography are so expensive is because you can't be close to the players. The closest you can be is on the sidelines, which means you need a lens that can not only zoom way in, but that can produce a clear image while zoomed in and can be easily adjusted for focus on moving people. Yeah. So what you're saying is there's another level of the porn we haven't discovered yet. Actually, there are there are porns that have been made on extremely high budgets and that have used expensive lenses. Um, in fact, there's many of them. There's also a reason why um, some uh, sex scenes in movies uh, look more shockingly, uh, uh, viscerally beautiful uh, than even the most wild and fantastical porn scene. And it's because the image that's being produced, the amount of work that's going into, you know, to producing the, um, the, that scene with that image, it results in an incredibly realistic and, uh, I guess the word is magical, uh, image. Anyway, I've gotten distracted talking about lenses. Um, but I want to get back to the thread. Again, Gear acquisition s syndrome is not a crime, and these lenses are budget options. A bit of a pointless impulse purchase since he only used it for the Showgirls video. 
But this is what he was doing just a few weeks before that video came out. Effortlessly impulse purchasing lenses. Keep that in mind. James has or had a habit of regularly aggressively driving viewers to Patreon by claiming that the videos were getting demonetized. While it's tacky, it's something a lot of queer YouTubers have had to deal with, so there's definitely a precedent there. But people were noticing that he did this a lot. Mid-March, he humble brags about needing to work so hard to make six videos in April because he has overbooked sponsorships. That's a hell of a brag. I have too many sponsors, so I need to make more videos. Then, March 29th, James posts this whole incel screed on Twitter about how sex work should be subsidized as a mental health service. He spends several days getting absolutely roasted for this, just dragged across the pavement and read for filth, and doubles down in the replies the whole way. So this is the context immediately surrounding James waking up on Friday, and then he posts the above video and the below tweet. We just got the lowest Patreon payout we've gotten in well over a year. Like, maybe we need to rethink things kind of amount. Not an April Fool's Day thing, by the way. But I don't know if we're going to be making videos much longer. Now this kind of unfolds in two directions. The first is that I'm convinced he was just lying about this income shock in the first place. There's a million theoretical edge cases about what maybe happened, and if maybe he just misunderstood the data or saw a glitch and panicked, maybe one of those things happened. I don't believe it. I think he just lied because he was salty about getting drag and felt like he was owed a win. A big tell to me is that he doesn't blame Patreon. He says he doesn't know what happened, but let's be real, Patreon screws up all the time. They're the first people that anyone blames if anything confusing happens, just as like a reflex, even if it's completely not their fault. The only reason to not blame F Patreon is if you already know that it's not their fault and that any investigation on their part might reveal embarrassing details. This is kind of similar to what I was just saying about the Nick situation, isn't it? Where if he had the evidence of it, he could have done that and it would have made for a better uh, apology video, a more shocking apology video. Instead, he indirectly blames his viewers for not watching enough, not sharing enough, and not turning on auto-renew. So regardless of the unknowable truth, this segues into the second, far more offensive direction of the messaging itself. I don't know if we'll be making videos much longer. Maybe the end. He explicitly framed this as an immediate existential threat to his channel. In the video, he is vague about everything, leaves a ton of hazy room for plausible deniability on how long the channel can keep going. But the messaging is, I need more patrons right this minute or my YouTube channel is over. He repeatedly evokes all of the fun stuff they had planned that would never see the light of day if it didn't turn around right away. And his audience received this message loud and clear. Tons of people making far, far, far less than him left very heartfelt messages about digging a little deeper to subscribe or up their pledge or unsubscribe from other channels in order to move their pledge over to his channel. 1,200 new Patreons in a single day. That is absurd. That is absurd. Actually absurd. Here's the archive proof. He was at 2,600, or he was at 2,657 on April 1st, and then over 3,600 3, on April 5th. That is a grift. Absolute fucking grift. Thank you, Danny. Here we go. I'll actually show these on the screen, just so you guys can see with your own eyes that Dan is not making this up, okay? Here we go. 2,657 patrons, okay? This was archived on April 1st. There's the archive up in the corner. Second archive, April 5th. 3,683 patrons. 1,000 patrons. Now, Dan Olson says 1,200 new patrons in one day. I don't think it was actually in one day. Well, actually, it could have been because if it had been archived, oh, we don't actually have the archive from the day before the first. The first was when it... So it actually... Dan might be right that it was actually 1,200 because um, we only have this one, which was made on the first. A uh, presumably after he... Um, oh, wait, there's 36 captures. 
Oh shit, hold on. It's on April 1st, so... Was there one before that? Oh, there wasn't one since February. Wait, let's see what the February numbers were. In February, he was at 2,602. I think Dan Olson was close enough. Fairly close. Uh, approximately 1,000. No, the numbers that I said here were, uh, sorry, hold on. Let me go for, let me go back here. This would have been from April 1st, April 1st. He had April 1st, he had 2,657. And by the 5th of April, he had 3,683. And of course we could actually just look and see how much more he got as the month continued. Let's take a look. Throughout April on the 15th, by the 15th, he had 3,770 by April 15th. So, yeah, his post about the, the coming end of his channel um, is, uh, it was successful. It was successful. Absolutely deranged. I simply don't believe the income shock was real in the first place that would put his post, maybe the end Patreon income at around $10,000 per month, US dollars. Add YouTube income, he spent the last seven months or so making around $18,000 per month. $18,000 a month, a month, okay. And that's not including his sponsorships, which Dan has already said he had so many sponsorships he didn't have enough videos made to fill out the sponsorships. And sponsorships for video essayists are huge. The amount of money you can get from a sponsorship is not tiny. Sponsorships are a lot. I have seen creators scale back their capabilities to the bone just to, to purely be able to keep making videos just for the love of like making stuff. Even as their funding evaporated and they need to go back to a jet desk job to cover their bills. You'd have to be so outstandingly reckless with your finances as a channel that a one month spook leads immediately to channel over. Sorry about all the fun stuff. We won't, we won't get to do this with you. You're our patron specifically because of you. Our patrons aren't giving us the money. And not a spook where you then spend a couple weeks crunching numbers. Oh no, a shock so violent where less than two hours later, you're weeping on camera about the channel being over. Three weeks later, he bought a brand new Sony FX6V for about $8,000 Canadian to add to his pile of cinema cameras, despite the fact that he was, but scant moments earlier, in such a precarious position that a single bad month would supposedly kill his channel. He stole your money, and for that, I am profoundly sad and angry. That's why I snapped at him in April, in April. I'm sorry I couldn't give you the full context then, and I'm sorry if that anger upset you. Obliterated. Okay? Now, obviously, Dan Olson makes some assumptions about how much money was being made, but I think that they are very reasonable assumptions. If you have, um, if you have uh 3600 patrons they're not all going to be one dollar patrons most patrons give more than a dollar it's just small donations are great and they're important and they are impactful to a channel but the reality is that a lot of people give way more than one dollar i think that um uh, and also when somebody's patron patreon is up you can usually get a better grasp of of what what the average is on their Patreon, although it's not 100% uh, possible to want to know. Uh, so I think Dan was being very fair here, and I think Dan has him dead to rights. It is simply a matter of fact that James Somerton uploaded a weepy video claiming that his channel was going to be over, begging his fans for more, what we sometimes call in the biz e-begging. Um, and then he proceeded to um, not behave as if his channel was in danger at all and instead purchase an exorbitantly expensive camera uh, when he already had a very expensive and perfectly functional camera. Pathetic and disgusting.
as a small artist, Mill Mil Artiste says, as a small artist struggling to even create a little soapbox to stand on, this is especially depressing. Like H-Bomb said, he took so much oxygen all for himself from other queer creators. He took money from queer creators. He took a lot of money. Uh, Dan Olson pointed out in this thread that um, he was asking for money from people who make a lot less than him. He was begging them for money, and he knew his channel wasn't actually going to fail. His Patreon, he didn't lose any Patreon, any patrons. As far as we can tell, he didn't lose anything at all. He was just mad and wanted people to give him more money. And they did. They reached in their pockets and gave him money. And he bought a fancy new camera with it while telling them that it was actually to save the channel. Now, I should be clear. There's nothing wrong with buying a fancy new camera for your channel in and of itself. But there is something wrong if you're telling people, I'm going to die, the channel's going to die, something that you like is going to be gone, and then you spend it on a fancy camera. Oh, that's terrible. This is a response to Dan Olson. I appreciate your thread very much. I'm unfamiliar with creator finances and U.S. money scaling even more. I'm Mexican. So I believed him, and I genuinely scraped from the bottom of the barrel to support him for so long. I'm chronically ill and disabled. I can't work. It fucking hurts. Oh, man. Now, there's one last thing in this drama mama that I want to talk about, which is the fact that this story has now reached, uh, has now reached the, uh, the eyes of, <laughs> let's just say it's reached beyond YouTube, okay? Vulture Magazine put out an article titled, H-Bomber Guy Didn't Want to Make That Four-Hour Plagiarism Video. We're not going to read this whole article, but I just want to point out that this is getting l much broader attention than just YouTube, okay? You all can go read this. It's got an interview with uh, with with uh, H-Bomber Guy, which is cool, and all that. We're not going to go all the way into this, but <laughs> here they go. Has... This video has broken out way beyond your usual viewer base. Even though you've had some other videos do that in the past, none have been quite a moment like this. How does it feel? This video is my Atlas Shrugged in the sense that it's far too long and inexplic in inexplicably has crossover appeal, despite being far worse than everything else I've ever made. I'm kidding, of course, but it's a shock because I made this video to talk about an issue that I think affects YouTubers, which is ultimately a small group. I didn't, I expected it to be popular with other YouTubers at best. I didn't expect it to be popular with everyone, ex especially when the second half is largely about an inter-community problem dealing with a few specific people. Yeah, this has, uh, this whole drama has reached very far. And I, I, I think it makes sense to me. I understand that it's probably fairly surprising for H Bomber Guy, but it makes sense to me. Um, people are very sensitive to the idea of their hard work being stolen, especially these days. Um, the economy is very rough. A lot of people are struggling. Um, uh, people have been working very hard for a long time to uh, with low rewards. And also, art is important to people. Like, really, really important. This world is not easy to live in right now, okay? It is, it is very difficult uh, to keep your head afloat uh, in the wake of a pandemic uh, that killed a lot of people, that has disabled a lot of people, that has completely and utterly changed the way that we live our lives. It is not easy. Art, for many people, has been life-saving. You guys hear me talk about this all the time, how much I value art. And believe it or not, YouTube is art. I know sometimes it doesn't feel like it. And there's a lot of stuff that I don't really think is very artistic on YouTube. But videos on YouTube are an art form. And they can be an art form. And a lot of people engaged with James Somerton's work as aspirational. They saw it as inspiring and representational. They saw it as at the as proof that uh, that like queer creators could make their way and queer issues could be talked about on a large level. And to a certain degree, it was. It is proof. It is proof that queer ideas are important and that there are a lot more queer people out there ready to listen to this stuff than people thought. It also proves that there are people who aren't queer who are ready to learn about this type of stuff and will voraciously devour it. And that almost makes it worse in the sense that it proved this 
for somebody who wasn't even making it in the first place. That a lot of what was made was stolen from the people who did do it. That the hunger is there. But it was redirected to somebody who didn't deserve it. It was redirected to somebody who was willing to lie. It was redirected to somebody who was stealing it for their own gain. In this particular drama, there is no question about the fact that James Somerton uh, plagiarized content. The facts are irrefuta irrefutable. Wow, I really struggled over that word. I'm sorry. Irrefutable. And uh, if you don't believe me, again, I assure you, please go take a watch of H Bomber Guy's plagiarism and YouTube video. It is fantastic. Um, and it lays this all out. Um, there is no doubting what actually happened. Um, but the response has certainly been, the fallout has certainly been wild. And I think it's telling that so many people care about this. I think one thing that we can take away from the fallout of all of this is that people, um, that, that people are hungry for genuine art. People are hungry uh, for the stories of queer people. Um, people are ready to accept that. Um, and also that they're really, really hurt that there was so much deception involved in this particular thing. And also that there are a lot of queer people that are languishing in the shadows, unappreciated because uh, disgusting grifters are totally willing to steal their work and pretend to be, uh, pretend to themselves be some kind of representative of the community. It's something I've thought about a lot and I've felt a lot. That section in the Dan Olson, um, in the Dan Olson uh, uh, t thread where he talks about how many queer people have talked about getting demonetized. Like, you guys know my videos have gotten crazy demonetized and I'm just a little tiny channel sitting here with, you know, 28,000 subs. I'm very thankful for my 28,000 subs, but I know for a fact how hard I'm punished by the algorithm and that every single video that I put up is demonetized. It fucking sucks. Now, lately, thankfully, my mainline videos have been really good, but also my mainline videos are my mainline videos. The videos that we put out on the channel as videos and not my live streams are very, very safe. OK. I, I just got to be honest, they're not like we don't censor ourselves, but like, take a look at this. The video that I talked about when we when we watched the video of the anti-gay cult going uh, going under, we censored out all of the uh, swear words and stuff like that. Video got limited. Um, hell, even the even the 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 debate reviews got limited. And those are the mainline videos, the ones that we are really careful about, and we edit out all the bad words and all that stuff. If you go to my live stream tab, oh man. Here, I'll just show you guys. I'll show you so you can see and be proven with your own eyes. Here's my live stream tab, okay? This stream, by the way, will be demonetized by the time I go to bed. Demonetized. Demonetized. It says sharing, but that's demonetized. 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 Hey, this one got by. Oh, wait, that was a seven-minute accident. This is a private video. Whoops. Oh, that sucks. The only one that's been monetized ever is a video that's private. Demonetized. Demonetized. Oh, shit. We finally got one that was monetized. That was my interview with Sisyphus and reacting to and then playing Dark Souls. Oh, this one's... Uh, oh, oh, there's another monetized one. Another unlisted video. Hey, this one's monetized. Oh, demonetized. Demonetized. Oh, monetized. Finally. Demonetized, 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 demonetized. Oh, demonetized, demonetized. That's out of 30, out of these 30 videos. Wait, there's 30 on here. There's minus two, which were private videos. 28 on here. Out of the 28 last streams that I've done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Out of the last 28 streams that I've done, 21 of my live streams have been demonetized. 
Mithril says, I watched James Somerton to try and educate myself about a group that I try to be an ally to. to. He betrayed that. He did. You shouldn't feel bad at all, but he did betray that. He absolutely did. Nana Extra Curse says, when it's demonetized, you can't make any money whatsoever on the videos. Um, uh, no, when it's demonetized, you can't make any ad revenue whatsoever. I still get super chats um, and I still get YouTube premium uh, rewards. Except for when it's sharing. When, when we have to share because of copyrighted content, then they get to steal that shit. And I do think it's fucking stealing oh you guys want to hear something crazy this is the last of this rant and then we'll wrap off the drama mama um i just want to rant a little bit you know as someone who actually who, who as someone who actually does struggle with this shit as a queer creator and by the way when have i ever said that the channel is gonna die Despite the fact that my channel has per has existed from its very inception in more dire straits than, than James Somerton has ever been in. When have I ever fucking screamed and cried about the channel being dead? Except for the times that I was mass re false reported and had the channel actually get taken down by malicious actors. And even then, I didn't give up. In, our, in my last video that I did, which is limited, by the way. You guys, you know the one where I where we watched the, um, the spiritual deconstruction video? That video got copyright claimed by two people. One of the copyright claims was for a public domain song from a uh, gigantic copyright bullshit company. There's these giant companies that will um, claim copyright claims on behalf of other companies and it's and you can't you don't actually know if they're even um if they're even going anywhere right so one of the so the video gets limited and here's the thing about youtube on youtube it's always in the favor of the copyright claimant because that's how they save their own ass from being on the line for this so i lose money even if it's invalid okay so one of them was copyright claiming a public domain song Okay, from some giant conglomerate that just puts out claims for anything that they can and they might never actually pay money anyway. And it was a, pu a public domain song. And the other one, get this, the other one was claiming a track that wasn't what the title said it was. The, the track that got claimed was that Eric Satie uh, Gnossian and it claimed it as a, as a totally different song. So it was a wrong claim. That has, I appealed it. It still hasn't been released. Chances are it will never be released. So I lost money for a stream that I filmed for seven hours live performing. I lost money for something that isn't even real. And there's basically nothing I can do about that because the favor is always given to the copyright claimants. Yes, and if you do dispute it, you have to give personal information to the claimant. And if you decide to do a full dispute and, and YouTube decides against you, you get a copyright strike on your channel. Which means I can't stream for a week. And also it puts me in danger. So you basically aren't... You, if you get demonetized, you just have to take it on the chin. There was a time when a sound effect played in a video and it got claimed as a song. And I appealed it and said, this is a sound effect. This is not a song. And they got, and I didn't get it back. I didn't get the money. They just upheld it. I'm not even joking with you. I'm dead serious. And even with all of that, you don't fucking hear me coming on here and claiming that I'm going to die tomorrow or that the channel's going to go under. Instead, what do I say? Do not fucking die, and I'll see you all on the next stream. Tipster, I totally 100, 100, 100 believe that. Tipster says, I got over 100 copyright claims on my channel in 2019 for a sound effect that's less than a second long that was in the intro that I used to use. It was awful. Terrible. Anyway, I have nothing more to say about the disgusting behavior of James Somerton. His apology was pathetic. We've seen it with our own eyes. We've seen him be refuted by his own writer. 
We've seen his claims about finances be exposed for what they are. Nobody should trust him. The type of manipulation that has been going on is unfortunately all too common, and it comes at the cost of queer creators who are really putting their heart and soul out there. And a bunch of people who are in many cases, even worse off than I am right now. And I'm just a tiny little fucking bug, okay? I'm a little tiny channel, okay? Um, are, struggle to ever see, to ever have their wonders see the light of day. That their work never gets to breathe because of people like James Somerton. It's a, tr a genuine tragedy. And I'm happy to see that people have responded strongly to this, and I hope that people hear my video and understand what I'm talking about, what I'm focusing on. Because there's a lot of people who talk about this and just want to talk about the drama, but that's not me. That's not what Drama Mom is about. Here, we talk about the things that matter. Here, we talk about the impacts. Here, we talk about how to spot this shit. If you've enjoyed this, make sure that you hear the signal by pressing subscribe and ringing the bell down below. Because I do a lot of work for my channel. I live stream for six to eight hours a stream to bring you guys this stuff. None of this fucking uh, 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 ripping from other people bullshit. Okay? None of that.